ミラドリフトジャパン革新のカーボンベゼル<音楽>ブルートゥース搭載 G-SHOCK カシオ The brightness. Call brilliant. Valenti. In Japan, breed. Tenton to Kakshin, Ogura Clutch no technology of Gyoshi, champion of Tortame no Clutch. Ogura Racing Clutch. ORC. Kyukuro, Shizukasa to Anzen Sen. On Road, Off Road. The world is a world. ケンダーその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔能性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りでは高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダー What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospel, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban.
Here we are, we finally made it. Drift fans, thank you for coming back to tune in for the 2022 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan here at the Okayama International Circuit in the Okayama Prefecture. We are about to start off the top 16 tandeming battles. Before we go into that, please uh, everybody stand and hats off for the Japanese national anthem. Thank you guys. Now we are going to introduce you the top 16 drivers that made it through the top 32 battle here into or here at the Okayama International Circuit. And starting off the top 16 all the way to the left here, he is only 13 qualifying first from yesterday's qualified driving the Team Cusco Racing GR Yaris car number 771 the future, Hiroya Minoa. Going against him, someone that's been around for quite some time. He is not gonna make it for easy for Minoa here in this first battle for the top 16 to the grade eight. He's in the Motis Good Ride, West Auto, JZX100, Chaser, Iko Saito. Second battle of the top 16. The Wild Driver driving the Total Car Shop Glitter with Car Life Orange and Next Dream VR38 S15 Sylvia. It is car number 23, UG Saito. Going against him, coming all the way from the West Coast. Took last round at FDUS at Salt Lake in the bag. Let's see if he can get the, in the bag here in Japan at the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles, Motis Lexus RC, number 21, Ken Gushi. Now another young driver, been in the Formula Drift Japan Series for a while, qualifying fourth from yesterday's qualified, driving the Linglong Tire Drift, Team Orange, JZX100 Chaser, has been on the podium multiple times. Is he gonna make it today? Car number 57, Kanta. Going against him, he's driving his new build, beautiful car in his Shibata Racing Team Silent Tire GR86. Beautiful, brand new GR86. It's gonna be number 31, Kodai Sobagiri. Fourth battle of the top 16 here with a beautiful, beautiful car. He's been away from the podium for quite a bit, driving the TMS Racing Team Silent Tire E92 BMW Coupe, car number 36, Kazumi Takahashi. Going against him only just about two hours down the road, probably a home track for him here from the Hiroshima Toyota Team Droopy. Driving the brand new GR86, number 33, Junya Ishikawa.
All right, so this is the champ. The champ is back. He made it into the top 16. See if he's going to make it to the top spot today. Winning the round last year and also taking the championship last year and the year before, driving the crazy of a beast JZX100 Mark II. Team Weld, car number eight, the champ, Koichi Yamashita. Man, going against him is a very young driver coming in from FDJ2 last year. First season here in the Awa Tire Japan Environment Development Racing S15 number 212, Ryutaro Oe. So qualifying seventh at yesterday's qualify. This man is sitting in second in the series right now. This is the sixth battle of the top 16 driving the Linglong Tire Drift. Team Orange, S15, Sylvia. Car number 27, Masanori Kohashi. Going against him, not only just an FDJ2 driver from last year, he actually took the number one spot from FDJ2. Here he is trying to make his mark in the Pro Series, riding the Good Ride Motorsports S15, number 61, Mao Yamanaka. Moving on to the second to last battle of the top 16, qualifying third yesterday, currently sitting in the top spot in the Formula Drift Japan Series, driving the TMAR GR86, a beautiful car and an exciting driver. It's a young gun car number 10, Hokuto Matsuyama. And talking about top spots, last event at Okuibuki, this individual took the podium, took it all, and let's see if he can take it again here at Okayama in the Good Ride Motorsports GR Yaris number 530, Wataru Masuyama. Last but not least battle here, the X Formula Drift USA champion is back and driving in the FDJ series, qualifying six from yesterday's qualify, has not won an event yet. Is it going to be here today? Driving the TMAR GR86, car number 87, Daigo Saito. Going against him, keeping the old school still alive with the Hiroshima Toyota Team Droopy AE85, number 99, Kazuya Matsukawa. These are your top 16 drivers. They're all going for that top spot on the podium. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. You can see right there, you have the Team Droopy, both members right there. You got some Ling Long tires out there too, teammates. Yeah, some interesting battles it's here. It's gonna be very interesting. So there's a lot of teams out there. The Good Ride team, they have a good amount of cars too. And then you have the Trail Motor Apex racing cars. So a lot of duos out here. Who is going to take round five here at Okayama? Yeah, and unfortunately, as you can see, with all these umbrellas, they're not just umbrella girls holding normal umbrellas uh, to keep the sun out of the eyes of the drivers. It's actually raining now, and the track is fully wet. Uh, I'm not going to say if there's you know huge puddles everywhere, but it's slick. Um, and uh, as you can see, some of the drivers are out there feeling the feeling the ground, seeing you know trying to figure out how slick it is out here. Uh, but since they did have uh, practice, they did have time to practice in the rain as well uh, day before ye or yesterday, um, they're not going to have any sight laps. They're going to go right into it. Yeah, so like Robbie was saying, uh, two days ago when we have the qualifying for the FDJ2 drivers, the pro drivers got to get some practice in on the damp surface that they're s suffering with right now. But you can see some of these drivers kind of testing their cars, seeing what kind of uh, grip level they're dealing with. There goes Owe right there, checking out his car. But yeah, I'm very excited for today's top 16. Top 32 was pretty awesome. We had a few one more times, but overall we had some good tandem battles throughout that uh, session.
Yeah, it looks like the tandem battles are going to get closer and closer. So uh, really looking forward to who is going to make it onto the podium today. Under these surface, uh, there are bad conditions here on the track. And uh, there you go, you see us. I am Robin Ishida. I'm one of the judges out of the three. And uh, Kenny Harris right next to me. And as you see on the camera, uh, on, the, on the screen right now to the right is Tom Saiba. He is the Japanese commentator doing the Japanese uh, live stream side. And next to him was Yoichi Imamura. Uh, he is uh, also one of the judges and commentating in Japanese. And uh, from far, far away, well, before we get to um, that, these are the Motor Games girls holding the umbrella, and I'm pretty sure they're happy they have the umbrella today because it is actually raining. So Yes, but yeah. it is still quite chilly out. There you go. This is our setup here. We are in the back of the truck. Uh, out Hold of the rain, down. nice and dry. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there we go. We got Brian Egger all the way from the East Coast. I'm pretty sure it's late now uh, for him. Um, he's going to have to stay up for a little while uh, to watch with us and also he is the guest judge here for the Okayama round. Thank you for joining us and thank you for your time, Brian. Um, I'll see you next week, uh, but uh, until then, uh, let's have a good time. You'll be watching some cool drifting on the screen and he will be doing this remotely. With the power of my finger. Yeah, and <laughs> Kenny's gonna be punching it in for him. So uh, let's go on ahead and introduce some of our supporters and sponsors of the series. G-Shock, Valenti, Yokohama Tires, Bridgestone, Dunlop, Goodyear, Toyo Tires, Good Ride, Kenda, Valino, 5X, Silent Tire, Vitor Tire, Linglong Tire, Motis, Carport Maruzen, RSR, Brid, Ogura Clutch, Rays, Cusco, Project Mew, BN Sports, Swift, Hot Wheels, Comtech, Kazama Auto Service, Arai Helmet, Treasure One Company, DMAX, Hummingbird, Krupi, Kiva, Torque Drift, Okayama International Circuit, and many, many more supporters and sponsors we have. Thank you very much. Uh, we won't be able to do this and show you guys an exciting show without these uh, supporters. So please go and support our favorite brands um, to help us uh, grow the sport. And also, thank you very much to all the teams, supporters, and the sponsors for the teams and the drivers for making it out here and everybody out in the crowds and you, Kenny, and us here um, as uh, officials. And most of all, thank you for you guys to tune in to the live stream. You guys out there from all over the world, tell us where you're from and uh, tell us your uh, uh, what time it is over there so we could actually... Kind so of, yeah, with that kind of joke about it. Exactly. With that being said, yeah, like Robbie said, I actually tune in to the live chat, what's going on on the YouTube channel for the Formula Drift side. So thank you all for tuning in, viewing in, um, and checking us out. And if we are getting annoying, obviously hit that mute button. Please don't. But uh, at the same time, um, yeah, send a comment in. We'll see if we can give uh, some shouts on where you're at. All right. So before we get into the program, we're going to take a short break.
横浜The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid. Valentine. Japan. Breed. 伝統と革新オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチオグラレーシングクラッチ ORC 究極の静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍するケンダーその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対摩耗性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りである高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダ
Here we are back to the top 16 battles here for the 2022 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan here at the Okayama Circuit. You guys just got done seeing the commercials by our sponsors and we just went over the top 16 intro. Now we are ready to start this battle, but it looks like the rain's picking up a little bit more out here. And you know, right before the commercials, you know, I, we, we were asking where y'all are from. And I'm gonna try to say a few real quick before this first battle between Minoa and Saito kick off. But we got some Tennessee, Indonesia, Hong Kong, New York, Finland, East Coast, Florida. Bangladesh, New Zealand, Malaysia, Puerto Rico, Missouri, Australia. Ireland. Florida, Brazil, Spain. Man, thank you so much, guys. Arizona, for Jamaica, so I'm going back really down. Good. All right, so let's get back to the main event here. The 13-year-old Minoa will be leading, and Saito, the veteran, will be giving chase. Here we are. The conditions definitely have changed for these drivers. They didn't get a side lap. They have already driven on the wet pavement two days ago. Let's see how they're going to pick it up here, and you can see how they dropped their pace. A lot more than what happened in the top 32. Minoa unable to get all the way out to the outer zone one, but he's really trying to get a feel for this asphalt out here. But yeah, his car is struggling just like Saito coming around to this outer zone three. And man, this is definitely taking a lot away from what Okayama has to offer. Hey, you know what I have to say, you know, going out as the first driver in the wet and uh, just making a lap. Uh, good job by Minoa and uh, behind Minoa, Saito right there overcooks it. A half spin there, a major correction. And like I said, Minoa, he tries to make his way to the outside zone. And I would say not so bad, um, especially under these conditions. Um, and he's being very, very careful. Um, and I would have to say the line is very, how can I say it? A shallow line uh, throughout the track, but watching Saito behind, uh, a lot more mistakes going on. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna say that the, that was the cleanest run by Minoa, but under these conditions, I'd have to say this is a uh, Yeah, this is enough. not going to be the easiest tandem battles to watch. I talked to the drivers a few days ago about the conditions they had with the track, and they said for some reason this track, once it gets wet, it gets really slick. But you got to think, this is an international circuit, so it gets driven on all the time. There's caked on uh, rubber and everything like that, and when it gets wet, the contact, the surface comes very slick. Yeah, and also the surface on this track is very, very nice because it is an international circuit and Oklahoma does keep it clean all the time. And it, there's a good washout of uh, yeah, the so water and stuff like that. Other than going into the uh, outside zone three area, which is usually a shortcut, it's an equal uh, pavement, I think. So the slick level, the slickness of the uh, the track probably doesn't change so much as you drive on it. Just being able to get uh, the first contact and the first feel on the track to see how it feels is really important. And these guys have already done it. So now Saito's leading and we know it's going to be giving chase. And here we go here. It looks like Saito's coming in really hot, coming around. Trying to get his car to stay loose right there. Minoa, oh, oh and Saito, too loose. too loose right there. That's an incomplete. And it looks like car. Minoa really understands his car and how it's going to perform. Yeah, it's not the most dynamic with the amount of momentum he's carrying, but he has really good control over that GR Yaris that he's driving by the Cusco Racing Team. So yeah, you can see right there, it's gonna probably be a pretty easy call for these judges to make. But yeah, it looks like right there from the jump, Saito was coming in really hot. And right there, he could just barely keep his car broken loose. And then right there, when he breaks it loose, he kind of loses it and has too much momentum into that outer zone one. Yeah, I think that, uh, getting used to the uh, surface and the car, Minoa probably did a better job and did it more quickly than Saito uh, watching his lead and chase because he did incomplete on both of them. And uh, he's struggling to keep the car um, staying sideways and smooth. See what the judges have for the final call here.
And there you go, all three shifting over. They're going to get it popped back up, but you got Hiroya Minoa who is going to get the win and move gave on. It away. Exactly. <laughs> move on to the great eight. So that's huge for Hiroya Minoa. Wow, Minoa makes it into the grade eight, and I think this is the first time for him to get out of the top 32 area, and he's moving quickly. Uh, made it all the way into the grade eight. Uh, tough luck for Saito. Um, he did so much of a better job in the dry and exciting. Uh, hopefully next time we'll see him at Fuji. Um, he could conquer the rain as well if it, it does rain. Exactly, but we'll see if the luck will push on to the next Saito, Yuji Saito going against Ken Gushi. Yuji right. Saito's in that VR powered S15, but he's also going to be going against Gushi, who has a VR under that hood too of the Lexus RC. Here we go. Looks like Gushi's pushing hard early right there, coming into 3 2 1 right there, closing that proximity into Saito, giving him a little love tap, coming around to that outer zone one. Oh, but Saito unable to control himself and come around. And yeah, it's just looking rough right now. And you All can right, see right so there the side. Whoa, we're riding the wall anyways. Yeah, so we'll have to check out this replay. You can see that side valence right there hanging off on the left side of Gucci's car. We'll see, looks like. Yeah, that was uh, that looked like there was a little bit of a push from the lead car. But, oh, then Saito goes off course and he corrects. So, uh, and I'd have to say, since he went into the dirt, that changed the pace of the lead car. Yeah, right there. He had two tires off right there, it looks like, into right after that 3-2-1. Yeah, so... I'd have to say that the chase car, it's really hard, especially under these conditions, and it looks like the chase car was trying to stay close to the lead car, yeah. and there was a huge error made by the lead car where they even took out angle, uh, corrected, uh, straightened almost, and uh, that's where uh, Gucci was, and uh, there was a contact there. So I would have to say that the lead car pretty much um, changed the pace of uh, the drift. Exactly. He, he exactly. He definitely decelled hard after that three, two, one dip in the two tires. We'll see how he's gonna do on his chase, going against Ken Gushi, who took last round for FDUS at Salt Lake. Yeah. So this is gonna be. Oh man, I wish it was dry, but this is gonna be a very. Uh, this is going to be a tough one. Yeah, and I think um, it's a fault on the lead car. So, sharing all the debris. So, thank you to the Okayama staff out here, holding it down, hosting it in a beautiful venue. Myself, Robbie, and the rest of the Formula Japan crew, we've been staying on premises. They have a local lodging. Uh, available so thank you to the staff here for providing that but let's see what Saito is going to do and then Robbie's getting the details on everything oh yeah early on in the chat y'all were mentioning that uh, Tundra that was in the background so that right there is the chariot that me and uh, or myself and Robbie we come to every event in that thing and yes the rear end on it is extended by I believe uh, two feet to a foot and a half but yes, it's a US Tundra, left-hand drive, V8, and yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. It cruises pretty well. But it also has that Jumbotron, which is provided for the spectators out here today. Um, and then sometimes they pull it into the pits at different events so the pit crew can see also. So yeah, if you were curious, that's what it is. It's not a dually, it's, it's a Toyota Tundra, just a little bit extended in the back. So it looks like they're checking them out but I don't think there's any damage or anything that's gonna permit any issues for him. But like I said before, both cars rocking the VR power under the hood. And I gotta give it to him. Ken Gushi coming out here all the way from the West Coast. 
barely getting any seat time in the vehicle that he's driving, that Lexus RC made, uh, created by the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles team out there. Hands down, the way he drives that thing and handles it, it's huge, different platform and everything compared to a stateside GR-powered GR86. But we're trying to get more details on what's going on. The rain is definitely not helping this situation out here. You can see how it's kind of uh, rough for the spectators and the dynamic of the drifting that's going on. It's definitely a lot slower pace, creating challenges not only for the drivers, but for these judges to make the right call, especially the one that they're looking at now where Ken Gushi made a little bit of contact with um, Yuji Saito on entry here because Yuji Saito is in the lead, but it looks like he dipped two tires right after the one cone, causing it to disturb his, what is it, his, his speed and everything, or his uh, momentum into that outer zone one, which Gushi was doing his thing, riding the line, but yeah, that disturbance caused the contact right there shortly after. We'll probably get one more view of that replay, but looks like Ken Gushi's already ready to go, sitting at the line. So we'll see here. So if you missed, the top 32 battle happened about an hour and a half ago. We went on a little bit of an hour and a half break, got our lunch in, but yeah, the top 32 battles were pretty exciting. We had a few one more time battles. It was an amazing smoke show. The weather was perfect, crisp, but unfortunately we are suffering what mother nature has given us, which is a little bit of a rainfall. Looks like it might've stopped or settled down all right, so oh, I'm sorry to cut you off, no, but uh, I was just going back and forth because we had to uh, figure out whose fault it was. And if there's a fault, um, either the cars can check it out, check their car out. Um, the car that caused the uh, collision will have to use a five minute and the car um, that got hit um, the collision, uh, which is in this case, the lead car's fault and the chase car gets 10 minutes they don't have to call a five, but then the lead car, lead car has to call a five uh, to get their car checked out. So there you go. You can see how the crew at the line taped up his little side valence he had. But it looks like he's going back to the pits to square that away, make sure his car is good to go. And there you go, Saito. Yuji Saito right there in his pits. Once they touch the car, the five minute starts. They're analyzing and assessing what the situation is that's going on that he wants looked at. So we'll see here. All right, as we're uh, watching the pits here, that's Saito's pits. Um, I don't know what they are in there for. I think there was some kind of body damage We'll see here. Shout out to the viewers out there. Hey, and you know what? Uh, shout out to the Formula Drift uh, family in the U.S. Uh, they're watching us uh, on the live stream too. So, we're having an you guys, love party. you guys. Yeah, see you guys next week, uh, and uh, hopefully one you, one day you guys can meet Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I'll stay a figment of you know. I'll just stay a screen. Yeah. So, um, I think they might be adjusting the toe or maybe checking the alignment on the car uh, because of the contact or is there something wrong with the car and is that why the car was acting weird maybe possibly um, but like one of the viewers out here said in the chat yes we do get uh, the bad luck so far you know if you've been following the Jace FDJ series we get a lot of bad wet weather conditions and this is what we're suffering with today but hey we got to deal with what we have and make what we what, make do with what we have and make it happen. So let's see if these drivers can pick it up. Outer zone one was definitely a problem child for the FDJ2 drivers. So let's see if these pro drivers here can get it together and give us some good tandem battles.
Yeah, so they... So just going back to what happened, if you just joined us, there was a collision um, at the entry. The lead car, Saito, is at fault for going off course and uh, pretty much had to straighten and take out the angle. So with the time and that... He, and even after that, even after that uh, push, uh, there was a try to keep going, but uh, a little after or during the outside zone one, it looked like Saito uh, went off course and uh, he couldn't uh, keep the drift. He pretty much spun out. But yeah, next weekend it's going to be a bit busy weekend for Robbie. Once again, he's going to go to Irwindale, check out the final round of Formula Drift US. So have fun out there, Robbie. Say, every, say what's up to everybody, even though they're watching right now. Since we have a little bit of time, let's talk about last round. Oakland. Wait, wait, wait. If you guys, hey, you know what? I'm coming out to Irwindale next week, guys. If you guys see me, give me free stuff. That's all I got to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, come say what's up to Robbie and, uh, yeah, give him some feedback on how he is on live. But going back to like what I was talking about, Okubuki last time, Wataru Masuyama, he, you can see there are time dwindling down, two minutes, 15 seconds left, but Masuyama, he took first, Daigo Saito took second, and Matsuyama took third, and all three of them are in the top 16. So we'll see how they're gonna do, because overall, Matsuyama is in the lead in the point standing with 279, while you have Kohashi, which is also in the top 16, he's sitting at 260. Rolling down to Kanta and then Masuyama and Saito. So the top five cars are in the top 16 right now. Ooh. So uh, I think uh, going into the next round in the final, which is a good, which is going to be the finals to see who is going to be winning the championship. Like I said, we're down to five cars, and one of them, one of the battles we have, we have Matsuyama versus Masuyama. So yeah, so one of them is going to knock one of the other out. And you know what? Huge shout out to everybody watching. Thank you very much. Um, you just earned yourself a free cheeseburger, so remember his name. Oh, Andy <laughs> Haley, he's a prospect driver. I know, yeah. but he's going to have to bring you a cheeseburger. Right, Andy, yeah, so make sure you got me. Uh, I like um, in and out so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but uh, earlier we saw the two minutes. I'm pretty sure they're down to a minute. They have to get the car down, but I don't think there was a... A Nothing, major yeah, issue. catastrophic. Maybe it was crazy. just more of a checkup to make sure that the car was okay because they want to make sure that they're going again. Since they're going against Kangushi, I'm um, pretty sure they want to make sure that the car is uh, ready to go and uh, in the best condition possible. Cars coming down. Looks like we are going to see a the second battle of exactly these VR powered beasts coming out. But yeah, thank you for the spectators out there, especially the ones that I know I've been messaging y'all during break and all that stuff. Thank you all for checking us out. And yeah. I believe I uh, I made my daughter feel bad, so hopefully she's watching now. She didn't watch me all weekend. So shout out to my daughter Bella. Shout out to my wife, Christine. If she's watching, she oh, gave yeah. me some tips earlier. She, I'm gonna, said, yeah, she did. <laughs> she was like, you said blah, blah, blah too much. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I'll, I'll work on it. <laughs> yeah. And then my wife too, Rachel, thank you for checking it, checking it out and uh, supporting me, allowing me to come out to this. That's right, I said allowing me to come out here. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We see Saito's car making its way back to the burnout box, which is on the other side here. That's the last corner here at the Oklahoma International Circuit. And as you can see, it is a pretty uh, huge facility. 2.3 mile track, 3.7 kilometers. Like I said, it's an international circuit. They host all forms of racing out here. And, you know, we talked about it last year, but they did have a wolf on premises. Yeah, they did. And, and you know what? It's sad to say, but then the wolf passed away a little while ago. Uh, they had two of them. They're actually really cute. Uh, but uh, I guess they had the wolves here in this facility. Well, around the facility. And I guess um, it's there because they were hoping for the wolves' sense to keep all the wild deers and whatnot 
away from getting into the trap. Yeah, he meant scent. So yeah, the scent, the smell of the what wolves. Are, you said scents. Oh, scent. They don't have pockets to and carry uh, any scents or anything in there. No, but Sorry. no, they actually have a wolf kennel. It's over by the lodging. It's actually still there. They actually still have a beautiful white German Shepherd out here. But uh, yes, unfortunately, the wolf ha uh, had passed away. So there they are. There's the burnout box at the very end of the track. You got Gucci on the left, Saito on the right. And if you're just viewing in, this is going to be the second portion of the second battle into the grade eight. Who is going to make it and who's going to battle Hiroya Minoa in the grade eight? Is it going to be Yuji Saito or Ken Gucci? And guess what? I stole Ken Gucci's old uh, nickname because it used to be uh, the future. Ken Gucci, when he was like 16 and he debuted as a professional driver, uh, I used that name for <laughs> Hiroya Minoa because he's 13 and I called him the future. So, um, I mean, he did kind of trump him. He's 13 years old. So, yeah, 13 year, year old Minoa is already sitting in the grade eight. But looks like they are pulling up to the line now. And we were talking about earlier, Saito dipped two tires, causing a huge decel, and that's when Gucci made contact. So the fault falls on that lead driver, which is Yuji Saito. He's definitely gonna have to pick himself up here and make up for that lost, um, that lost run that he had right there. And we're gonna have to see how Ken Gucci's gonna do. And I must say, Ken Gucci coming out here with no time, no seat time or anything in that car. He's, yeah, he's, he's been doing, doing a phenomenal very, job. very good this year. Yes. Um, and uh, I already know, and I know how he feels too, going back and forth, because I've done it for like 14 years, where you're going back and forth, you kind of arrive, and you just kind of jump in the car and do what you can do in what you have. So um, a lot of concentration needed um, and a lot of skills needed. So here we go. And it looks like he has it. So let's see what's going to happen here now, now that Gucci is leading and Saito is giving chase. And here they are coming through the 3-2-1. Nice job. Nice initiation. Let's see if he can carry it early on and all the way through outer zone one. And you can see how slick wow. that track is right there. He's on the gas right there all the way through, but just unable to get any momentum out of outer zone one. And Saito, oh, Saito, huge correction, locking up right there, unable to get to outer zone two. Beautiful job by Gucci right now. Whoa, oh. Saito taking out his spoiler right there. Knocking the wing out and sucking him in on the inside of outer zone three. But look at that, Ken Gucci finishing off real strong. Ooh. Let's check out this replay right here. Yeah, so as you can see, it looked like uh, Gucci was offline here a little bit wider but you know it's slick and this transition it looks very shallow and he looks very very careful be behind him i see some smoke when he's dragging the e-brake but it looked like it's a little bit drier there uh, going from the touch and go going from the touch and go to the outside zone two and three area um and uh saito straightens up a lot and look at the contact he made with the wall I guess the contact wasn't super hard, but uh, the wing kind of uh, took out all the cones on top of the uh, wall. Yeah, and a lot of those rear ends are not structurally supported, so it collapses real easily. It makes it look really bad. There you go. Eggert going with Ken Gushi going right. Robbie Nishida wants to see it one more time. Imamura going right with Ken Gushi, and it looks like Robbie's waving his hand because he might have fat fingered something here. No, no, it's 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 all Ken Gushi. That was a. Uh, I thought. Yeah, you wanted it one more time. It's okay. <laughs> For some reason, it came out. See, I didn't make the mistake here. Robbie made his own mistake. So <laughs> let's check out this next battle. They're lined up, ready to go. You have Kanta going against Kodai Sobagiri. That was kind of embarrassing. I was like, what? I was like, what was happening? <laughs> Oh, see, man. Now I can, I'll can. i give him a, a hard time well, the see, whole I'm ride home. Well, see, I'm trying to do this because i got to talk to the tech guys and everything. Now too, so. all this stuff's yeah. very, now yep. this is affecting you. <laughs> here, go ahead. You, you do all the intro stuff. <laughs> all right, here we are. Let's see how Kanta's going to do on the lead run here going against Sobagiri. Sobagiri, this is new car. He debuted at, I believe, two events ago. I think it was that beast, actually, round two. Here they are coming up the run here in the 3-2-1. Oh, Sobagiri coming in real hot right behind Kanta, unable to hold on. Kanta kind of doing his own thing. 
just able to keep his car right there, dipping two tires, coming back in through the transition, through the touch and go. Around the outer zone two right here, Sobagini making up for it here, but unfortunately with that entry Ooh. he had, but look at that right there, that close proximity, he's closing in on Kanta. And man, Kanta just trying to manipulate his car to be in every one of those zones. There we go, there was a tire drop there, but before that it looked like Sobagini was starting to spin. So I would have to say that was a, not a clean lead run up until the outside zone one, or through the outside zone one, then the touch and go outside zone two, not a hard flick obviously because it's uh, a wet surface, but I think Kanta did a great job at the outside zone three, and Sobagini not giving up is just trying to hunt down the lead car, but uh, he did have the spin there. Um, and as you can see, it looks like Sobagiri was already starting to spin out as he was uh, initiating. So uh, I think the fault is going to go. No, there was no contact, not a real contact, but... I don't think the lead car had anything to do with that spin. Yeah, he was already over-rotating, it looked like, from the approach. But here you go. Tables are now turned. Sobagiri is going to be in the lead while you have Kanta in the chase. We'll see how Kanta is going to adjust himself, being in that chase position, approaching outer zone one. And like I said before, during FDJ2, outer zone one was probably the worst spot when it came to the qualify. And for them, there is 27 cars and only 10 qualified for the top 16 spots due to that outer zone one and washing out. Yeah, because uh, you're coming from a very high speed. I think it's close to like 100, uh, maybe somewhere around there, 150, 160 kilometers, which is around 100 miles uh, per hour, I believe, uh, at the entry here. And going in from that speed to the outside zone one is very hard to just uh, manage to slow down enough and smoothly so it's not abrupt. Oh man, they're coming in real hot to this 3-2-1, carrying it through all the way out to outer zone one. Let's see how Kanta's gonna adjust himself to close that proximity gap that he's created here, coming around from outer zone one through this touch and go. Oh, oh. Oh, oh no. Sobagiri finding himself in the wrong area, not able to transition from the touch and go to outer zone two. Making it a little, a lot easier for these judges to make the final call. And right now it looks as though the weather is looking a little better for us which means there's gonna be a lot of, lot more stickier patches out there. Yeah, because man, I mean, if it's gonna rain, it should just rain because right now the rain is taking a break, it looks like, because I see a lot of white smoke uh, when they're like dragging the e-brake and stuff like that in between the touch and go and the outside zone two area. So there you go. The Ling Long girls supporting their driver, Kanta. So they were talking about how cute the girls were. <laughs> cute the girls were. were. Man, it's, it's so cold. My mouth is like. No, it's uh, all the, there you go. Brian Egger going with Kanta, Robbie Nishida with Kanta, and Yoichi Imamura. They're all going left to Kanta. So Kanta gets the win and we'll be moving on to the grade eight. No, you know what? Congratulations, another young driver. He's podium many times in FDJ. He started Formula Drift Japan uh, when he was like 18, and he's been in the series for a while. Uh, stepped out for a year, but back, and he's stronger than ever, making it into the grade eight. Uh, better luck for Sobari, Sobagiri. Hopefully, he can come back stronger and ready with his brand new build for this year at Fuji. All right, here we are, the last battle on the left side of our bracket. It's going to be against Kazumi Takahashi going against Junya Ishikawa. All right, so we got Takahashi in the Wild E92 and Ishikawa in the brand new GR86. But what's what's thing? The thing is, is they're actually both new because there's a new power plant underneath the hood of Takahashi's Whoa. BMW. Look at that close proximity by Ishikawa. Beautiful job 
Looks like few oh. tire dips right there by the lead coming around through the touch and go. Let's see if Ishikawa can close that proximity once again here on the second half of the track in the outer zone three. Whoa. Nice job dialing it in right there. Coming around. The momentum may not be there, but man, the proximity is. Man, that was a very impressive slick uh, tandem that we just saw right here. Takahashi not throwing as much angle as Ishikawa. Ishikawa behind throwing more angle. Takahashi dipping two tires off on the outside zone one. Ishikawa keeping it within the track and also giving good uh, pressure to the lead run. Now gets a little separation here by the touch and go. And after that, it looks like Ishikawa gets it, catches right up. Slightly smaller line there at the outside zone three, but he gets right to the side of that E92 uh, driven by Takahashi. And it looks like Ishikawa giving him the pressure uh, most of the time on the track. Yeah, that's very interesting because Takahashi has been throwing some extreme angle throughout this weekend. And to see Ishikawa come out here and kind of overpower him with the angle, it's pretty crazy to see. You can see right here the overview coming around to outer zone three. See how both, ooh, ooh look at that. just grazing the wall. Now we that have is, to see if Ishikawa could do that. That is very impressive right there by Takahashi. That's what we want to see. Man, and here they are coming up, ready to go. Ishikawa is going to be in the lead this time while Takahashi is going to be in the chase. And like I was saying, so Takahashi now has a VR under the hood. He was rocking the GR engine last year, and then Ishikawa did a whole new power plant. He's got a GR86, and he's got a one GR, I believe, like he had last year dropped in the, under the hood. Yeah, that's cool. Both, uh, both coupes from... You know, you got a Japanese coupe and you got a German coupe, uh, both with V6s. Hey, this is kind of cool. Both cars don't have a V8 or a 2J in it. <laughs> that doesn't happen that often either. Well, V8 is a guarantee here, but yes, 2Js are pretty much everywhere. Yeah. So yeah, not a whole lot of V8s here in Japan. Uh, a lot in the States, but not a whole lot over here. But yes, there is a lot of 2Js. I was gonna count it up. Uh, to see what kind of engines everybody had. I think 90% of the cars here has a 2J. So let's go ahead and check this out. The non-2J battle of Ishikawa leading and Takahashi giving chase. This is the second half here. How are they going to do? Ishikawa looks like he's coming in real hot to that 3 2 one, adjusting himself. Minor correction Whoa. there through that 3 2 one, Able to carry it through right there to that outer zone. Wow. Nice job by Ishikawa. Dipping a little bit there toward the end of outer zone one. Filling that touch and go a little bit more than he did before. Oh, and he's coming oh. in real hot to this wall right there. And just saving himself from that wall. <laughs> <laughs> and Ravi called it. He's like, let's see how close he can get to it. I'm talking about that suspense was insane. Approaching that outer zone three. Wow, that was a very close battle. I'm just watching right now. He's but. lost for words. Yeah, there's the tire dip right there by Ishikawa. Wasn't all the way deep in that touch and go, yeah. but he he definitely was there, unlike his uh, chase run. Wow. Oh, we got to see that side view. Man, there's a number of uh, small mistakes made by both of the drivers. Um... So this is going to be a very hard one to call. Yeah, and Ishikawa what, didn't have the... Here you go. Woo! Oh, just <laughs> crazing it. But yeah, he didn't have the most fluid. You know, he didn't have the full 100% fluidity throughout the course. Um, but he definitely was trying to manipulate his car with the track conditions. Ooh. It's going to be a tough one. We'll see what these judges have for the final call here between these two drivers and see if it was enough for them to make the call on the defined winner here. Here we are, the lead to lead and chase to chase cross comparison. Ooh, with Ishikawa being close, Takahashi going wide, but 
Takahashi more angle through touch and go. And I like his approach with more angle going around the wall than Ishikawa. And right around here, Ishikawa shallow. Takahashi more angle as a lead car. And has so a there's like good too, yeah. good bads and bads uh, from both drivers. So we'll see. Definitely not making it easy for these judges. Once again, here's another replay. Hard angle by Ishikawa in the back on that chase position. But he had that close proximity to Takahashi. Robbie's over here scratching his head. Really analyzing these two runs here. Ensuring that he's making the right call to see who's gonna fill this last spot here in the top 16, moving on to the great eight. Who's gonna battle Kanta into the great eight? Oh man, I mean, it was like a fair share of mistakes by both drivers and I was just looking for anything greater than the other. And, um, all right, looks like we have a one more time by Eggert, one more time by Robbie. So right there, you are going to see a one more time battle between these two to see who is yeah. going to move on to the great eight. And uh, I think uh, I think Imamura was looking at the leads, and he didn't value the angle as much, uh, or he didn't deduct it as much, um, and that's why he uh, pretty much went with Ishikawa too. But yes, um, and a, a lot uh, of you spectators were right. That is a made the right call there because i think you know there was a lot of mistakes here and there closer further but uh lead run both of the cars did their fair share of mistakes i think ishika did better at the outside zone one but he was shallower at inside clip and also at the touch and go and uh, the way he approached the line from outside zone two to three two wasn't as good i think takashi's line was a little bit more natural so uh let's check that check out that one more time uh, a little later after this and here you go, the next battle, the right side is gonna be Koichi Yamashita going against Ryutaro Oe. Yamashita, the two-time champ in the JZX 100. Let's see how he's gonna map out with Ryutaro Oe, who's coming up from FDJ2. Oh, Oe losing it right there, not able to hold on, unfortunately. And Yamashita making it happen right there, right in the line through outers on one. Looks like he was pretty shallow in that touch and go. Oe trying to make up right here. But man, unfortunately, Oe made a huge mistake. Oh, Yamashita oh. losing it right there. Leaving outer zone three. And like I said, when you come in to, from outer zone two to outer zone three, there's a drop in pavement. And then when you leave that inside area, that um, driving lane or the infield right there, it has another dip. But at the same time, the drivers told me that the pavement difference is, uh, the grip level is different because of how much they get driven on. All right, so there you go. OA incompleted, so his run is over. But the lead car has to finish the run. But the lead car, Yamashita, spins out, and he incompletes. So pretty much that's a wash. That run uh, pretty much didn't even happen right now. Man. That was such a waste because I, I, like you said, you know, Yamasta was very, very shallow uh, coming from the end of outside zone one, going all the way to outside zone two in angle. But uh, yeah, that's going to be a incomplete. Yeah, very unfortunate. Oh, right there. That was beautiful proximity, but just way too much. Unable to get out of that angle and uh, carry it forward. And you know what's scary? Oh, it spun out right at the end, too. Know, so so that's two incompletes. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that? I got two incompletes it's behind gonna one incomplete. Yeah, it's going to deduct you from your next run. There you go. Or the next round. If you make it to oh, the man, next round. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's, that's really bad. Let's not and Now do we're that. just making rules up. Yeah. All right, so Oe now is going to be in the lead while you have Yamashita in the chase. And this isn't looking good for both drivers right now. Let's see if we can get a complete run by one of these drivers. It's wet, but it's not that wet because it's not raining. 
All right, here they are approaching the 3 2 1, and you can see some of that smoke, so things are starting to dry up right there. But once again, Owe unable oh. to hold through and unable to get it. Here goes Yamashita. Yeah, that's it. I mean, the run yeah. is over because. Yamashita trying to see what he could do, trying to try the track a little bit more for these other drivers that are about to come out, and you're starting to see a little bit more and more. Oh, oh. Owe just grazing that wall. <laughs> I mean, the run's over, so. Yeah, but. Hey, entertainment is yeah, entertainment at yep. the end of the day. So, hey, if we got to watch slow tandem battles. They're going to bring the extra entertainment with them. <laughs> yeah, so as soon as the lead car incompletes, the run is over because there's nothing to chase. So at this point, uh, most likely it looks like Yamashita is going to get it because we only have one scored run. Not scored, but we have only one run out of the four, or the two runs with four, I guess four runs, I guess, uh, lead and lead and chase, chase. Um, Yamash is the only one that made one full run. So, tough luck for Oe there, and a great job by Yamashita dodging the lead car as he was spinning out. Yeah, that was back to back for OA on the mistake he made there, leaving that 3 2 1. Uh oh. And there you go, you can see how he. So we'll see here, just waiting on the judges. Oh. He showed it already. <laughs> and that's my fault right there. My apologies, Edgar. I didn't mean to do that. I left, I just wanted to leave you all out there in suspense <laughs> on what was going on. <laughs> No, no, no. There you go, Brian Egger going with Yamashita, Nishida with Yamashita. So Koichi Yamashita will be moving on to the great eight, the first one on the right side of the bracket. Yeah, sorry about that delay, guys. That's all Kenny, so. I was just <laughs> in the groove of talking. And I was like, we were kind of like, I was kind of thinking like, was there something we missed? <laughs> See, I had to get the judges really thinking. Yeah. My apologies, but here we are. We're gonna move on to the next battle here. It's gonna go against Kohashi and Yamanaka. See how this is gonna go. Both S15, both packed with a 2J under the hood. Kohashi right now is sitting in second overall point standing. So he, he needs this to move on. And he got knocked out last round pretty early. So Kohashi won D1 Grand Prix last year and Yamanaka won FDJ2 last year. Oh, oh Yamanaka making a Yamanaka huge correction. Kohashi just holding through, dipping a tire right there through outer zone one. Oh, picking up some speed there, coming around. Is he going to be able to hold on to that? Just oh. able to save himself from that wall right there. And Woo. Yamanaka oh, just loses it. And man, coming through that touch and go. Kohashi definitely got on the throttle and uh, made it a little nerve-wracking watching him approach that outer zone three. Oh man, that was a uh, that was a uh, pretty frightening to see. Well, right here, it looks like they're starting to pick up some speed, some serious speed because it's it's wet but half wet, so. Yeah, the, the, look at this right here. He picks up the speed. He couldn't get the car sideways as much, so the car kind of went forward. And uh, yeah, he almost led Yamanaka into the wall too, but Kohashi, not phasing him at all. He just uh, got back on gas and went around that wall. Man, definitely. That kind of was the same approach that Kusaba had on his uh, top 32 battle, but he pulled out and just, you know, Go ahead. Oh, I he thought you were stuck. No, no, I was just telling you that it's raining. Once again. Yeah. But yeah, he, he kind of stopped and he washed out. But right there, you can see how Kawashi just got right back on it um, and brought himself back into the zone. And I mean, phenomenal job all the way around. There you go, the Linglong Tire Girls supporting their teammate Kohashi out here. 
Hopefully he can make it into the grade eight and battle Yamashita. And here they are lined up, ready to go back at it. Yamanaka is going to be in the lead this time while Kohashi is going to be in the chase. So both of the drivers are young drivers. Kohashi from Team Orange. He is originally from way up north in Aomori Prefecture. Battling him is Yamanaka, Mao Yamanaka. He's from the Kanagawa, Yokohama area. Son of Kenji Yamanaka, XFD USA driver. Now leading and Kohashi giving chase. Here they are coming in real hot through that 3 2 1 right there. Carrying hard angle around. Let's see if he can carry it all the way through to outer zone one. Able to get nice there. Nice job on outside zone one. Exactly. Coming around Kohashi trying to keep that close proximity right here. You can see how it's drying up right there. Throwing a little bit of smoke through that touch and go. Here they are coming around to that outer zone three. Oh, oh. just kissing that wall. And Kohashi losing it in that chase position. Kohashi. Not able to hold on and right now, there. Now we have to go to the lead to lead because both chase cars incompleted. Look at this right here, that angle, that hard angle Yamanaka had right there. Got right back on it through the start of outer zone one, carrying it all the way through that zone. Swinging back around through the touch and go. Nice job through the touch and go, nice flick. And then right here, real deep into that outer zone three. Oh, wow. Left some suspense out there. And now we're going to have to go to lead the lead, lead the lead. So let's see here who is going to get it. Man, Yamanaka really stepping it up right there in the lead position. Look at this right here. <sighs> oh, man, and he's on throttle. He's not deselling. Um... Whoa. That definitely changes a lot. That does, it really does. And we talk about it, you have to wait till the end to find out who's gonna get it because you never know what's gonna change. And right there, outer zone three, boom. Edgar going with Yamanaka, Nishida going with Yamanaka, Mao Yamanaka, the champ from last year's FDJ2 is gonna get the win and move on to the grade eight. Wow. At first, Kohashi looked like he had the huge advantage against Yamanaka, but, Man, you never know what's going to happen till the end. Uh, great job all weekend by Kohashi. Uh, but this time, Yamanaka uh, takes them. So we'll see Yamanaka going against Yamasta at the grade eight. And uh, better luck for Kohashi. He's still in the championship race. Uh, now he's probably sitting here hoping uh, Masayama's going to take out Matsuyama. <laughs> We'll see here, but like you oh, just no, said, but actually, they're both sitting nice. Matsuyama's first and Matsuyama's actually, Matsuyama fourth. Matsuyama is like two places under Kohashi. Exactly. So. Oh, man, that's, oh, man, this is getting really interesting. It got interesting like super quick. And so like Robbie just said, you just saw who's at the start line right now. Hokuto Matsuyama, he's going to be going against Wataru Matsuyama. And Robbie said, this is going to be a tongue twister for me because you got Matsuyama and Matsuyama. So I'll probably say lead driver, chase driver, so it doesn't jumble them all together and uh, confu confuse you all out there. But Matsuyama, he's in the TMR or Trail Motor Apex Racing GR86, powered by a 2J, while you have Masuyama, he's in the GR Yaris, powered by a 2J also with the Good Ride team. All right, we'll see here who is going to be victorious. Here they are coming around outer zone one. Coming into outer zone one right here. Oh, huge correction right there. And three tires off. Man, right there. Chase is doing a phenomenal job right there. Coming around to outer zone three right there. Oh, taking out his wing right there from Matsuyama.
and then finishing right there. Man, that was very insane right there. Taking out his wing. Let's check out this replay here. Huge adjustment right there. Dipping three tires from the start. It is not looking healthy for him right there on his lead run. Ripping back around and right here, you can see leaving that outer zone three, he came in real hot to that outer zone three. Oh! From outer zone two to outer zone three, just taking the whole rear end out right there. Yeah, that was definitely rough. There is no moving that concrete barrier. Look at this right here. Oh, Way man. too much. Way too much momentum Ooh. carried into that outer zone three. And you can see how his line on outer zone two was thrown off, which carried him deeper into that outer zone three. Yeah. Man, definitely going to have to check that rear end out because he has a rear radiator back there, I remember. Yes. They, they had, had an issue in his rear radiator Last before. event, yeah. So it looks like he's going to be possibly taking that five-minute competition timeout. Yeah, I think he's going to have to for sure. Yeah. Masuyama right there awaiting the call. Probably checking out our uh, live feed right now. So we'll see. He looks ready to go. That's a new livery setup he has. And it's looking like he's just pulling straight up to the... Yeah, maybe the radiator looks like it's okay, but I think they're gonna have to tape that up because it looks like half of the wing flew off. Yeah. And it's probably just the outer um, skin. There's a lot of tape they're gonna need for this one. Yeah, it's gonna be See this more. replay, look at this contact right here, the oh, impact. Yeah, he, he started to catch angle too late. Oof. No, oh, never mind. I think he's going to go back to the pits because. You can see some uh, fluids right there coming off of his tire right after he left outer zone three. So something definitely, obviously something got smashed up back there, but um, something very important. You think something got smashed or? Uh, I don't know. It looks okay. All right. So going back to the pits right now, he has to get uh, whatever it is out in the back removed. They got to bust out the orange tape for him. All right, you can see the team right there crowding together, assessing the damage. It looks like we have a camera heading that way, so we'll get some footage on what's going on in the pits for the TMAR um, racing team. Yeah, so Masayama now patiently waiting. So right now, Masayama has a huge advantage. And he's did, just gonna have to... Did you get the names right? Masayama and Matsuyama? Because this is something really hard for uh, Westerners, I could say, uh, if you're not Japanese. Because in Japan, Matsuyama and Masayama is a big difference. But, oh man, yeah, there you go. The radiator is pushed. Uh, five minute has started. And look at that, all hands on deck. And yeah, he's cleaning the surface because most likely they're going to go ahead and start taping it down to ensure that it doesn't fly off or affect anything for the next part of the battle. So it looks like looks like the damage is co cosmetic and his radio radiator looks good. It looks like the overflow bottle right here. Watch right after the impact, you'll see on the left rear tire you see some fluid coming out. It looks like that cracked 
or the destroyed overflow bottle is what was the fluid coming out. So right after that impact right there, man, that's so hard to watch. And then you see some fluid hit the ground. So we'll see. Repairing it, it's just like last event at Okwibuki, you had the Cusco Racing Team, they had to do the same thing for um, Kaneda's car. But yeah, it looks like not the best job, but hey, this is what's gonna make this competition continue. Two minutes and 55 seconds, or two minutes and 50 seconds left on their five minute competition timeout. Yeah, so they have to use their five because the contact was made uh, by themselves. And also, um, we're not going to have, you know, there's a lot of uh, loose parts on there. So they'd have to drive the car and make sure that the car is not, or is safe to be on the track because we don't want things flying off the car, uh, flying into the stands and stuff. So there they go, they're taking off the rest of that wing, that skin. Getting everything else repaired. If you're out here watching, you're checking out our live stream, the English live stream, go check out the uh, sponsor booths up top. So there's a rule, um, you know, Formula Just Japan, uh, we do uh, share the rules as, you know, Formula Just USA, but then we didn't really have many walls, um, so we didn't really uh, use the uh, rule where they have in the U.S. where a lot of the drivers in the U.S. cannot have a GT wing on uh, their vehicle if there is a wall. Um, and also, I think if the the spectators are closer, that's safety reasons. And uh, we might have to implement that uh, for this round. Uh, we'll go in and look into it too. Um, and you know, things like this happen. Uh, we try to keep it as safe as possible. And you know, safety is number one and uh, we learn as we go as well. So uh, we might have to do that for this, uh, for these rounds as well in Japan. But the spectators are pretty far away uh, from the wall area too. But uh, we just want to make sure that the car is going to be safe where the parts aren't going to be flying off on the straightaway because they're going to catch pretty good speed. And you know, uh, I don't know if any of you have ever held a fiberglass bumper out the window dropped it in the track and try to pick it up in a car. But even at a low speed like that, you know, wind does catch a lot. You know, there's a lot of uh, scrub enforced by the wind. So you have to make sure that the car is okay and doesn't cause any problem, other problems. Exactly. So it looks like he's ready to go pulling up to the line. I think they're giving them an option to go to the warm-up area. But he's ready to go and ready to send it. So let's see this second part of the battle right here. Masuyama in the GR Yaris is going to be in the lead this time, while Matsuyama in the GR86 is going to be in the chase. If you're just tuning in, Matsuyama right here in the G orange TMAR GR86, he made hard contact in outer zone three against the wall, you know, taking up pretty much the whole rear end, but was able to save himself from destroying his radiator. It's got rear radiator, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So he saved himself from that. Um, Maybe built, they built the extra. Especially from last cage, event, yeah, yeah. For the radiator. But man, this is a very important uh, battle for Matsuyama because the second place ranking driver in the series right now got just got knocked out which was Kohashi now Matsuyama uh, he could create a gap in between their points going into the last round in Fuji uh, next month but unfortunately Matsuyama gets an incomplete because he goes into the wall in a huge correction as the lead driver and speaking of which Matsuyama is fourth place in the series so he's yes. not that far behind from these guys. He is, and he's slowly trying to chop them away and try to get. And Kanta, which is third, he's is, still there he made too. it into the grade eight. So we're going to see here. We still have two battles on the right side, and we'll be moving back 
to the left for our one more time battle on the left side. It looks like they are ready to go. Yeah, man, this rain is just kind of annoying because it's like kind of coming down, not pouring, kind of slows down, then kind of comes down. It's like, you know what, if you're gonna pour, just pour. Keep it wet uh, for these guys that they got an even uh, patch to drive on. So here we go, Masuyama leading Matsuyama. There you go right there, coming around, nice job. Beautiful job by both cars right there. Oh, looked like Matsuyama took it a little too hot, but Matsuyama was able to hold on to that lead position around to that outer zone one. Here he is coming through the touch and go, and he's definitely got to keep a clean lead run here, coming around outer zone three, trying to carry it all the way out wow. to that wall. Not too bad there. Matsuyama unable to get oh. all the way out there. And man, unable to hold on after that outer zone three. And you can see right there how slick it is for these drivers. Man, Matsuyama did good at uh, uh, Suzuka because it was wet. But this time it doesn't look like the wet is, or the wet is maybe against him. Yeah, and I must say, at Masuyama, he's definitely performing very well in this new GR Yaris that he's, uh, he's rocking. And to think, early on, whenever he tra changed over to this car, because his original 350Z um, got totaled right before that Bisu round, brought this one out, and he's like, I don't know if I'm a fan of it. And then out of nowhere, he started yeah. to perform very well, podium last time. So it's like, are you sure? Yeah, and he's like, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it. And it's like, okay, but well, you're doing good. Yes, yeah, so just continue <laughs> what, doing what you're doing. So here you go, Eggert going over to Masuyama. There you go, Wataru Masuyama gets the win and we'll be moving on. Congratulations to Masuyama making it into the grade eight and that's it for Matsuyama this weekend, the leading uh, points leader of the series is knocked out at top 16 here at Okayama International Circuit. Now let's go back to uh, the one more time battle that we have here um, uh, with Takahashi leading and Ishikawa giving chase. And this is a last battle on the left side of the bracket. So all we have is a left and right side last two battles. Here they are with their one more time battle. Takahashi in the lead, Ishikawa in the chase. Coming around. Look at that proximity Ishikawa's doing. Oh, just giving a love tap right there, oh. making him lose. Oh! And we'll have to reassess that and see what kind of uh, decel Takahashi had because, man, Ishikawa was coming real hot, and you can see how his proximity kept closing in more and more. Had that contact right there right Ooh. before that outer zone one. And here you go. Here's that replay. Yeah, it looks like the contact happened after the lead car was trying to go. Yeah. So I would have to say uh, that most likely might be the fault might be on the chase car. So here they are coming around back to the start line. So we'll see here. Ishikawa is going to be in the lead this time while you have Takahashi in the chase. All right, so I think all the judges agree on this one. Um, it looks like it, the, the fault is on the chase. And uh, just to check out the car, uh, the vehicle that was not at fault gets 10 minutes to check his car. So there you go, Takashi heading to the pits right now. So we'll see here. 
These are our last two battles right here. This is the last battle on the left side to the great eight. And then we have the right side, our last battle that's going to happen to see who's going to move on and go against Masuyama. Right now, we're going to see who's going to be going against Kanta in the grade eight. For the viewers out there, in about a month and a half, a little over a month, we're going to be hosting at Fuji International Speedway. So definitely check us out if you're in the area. Come check it out. We're going to have some FMX driving out there. A lot of vendors booth. If you're out here, go check the vendors booth out. We have a few food vendors up there also. And uh, yeah, you guys probably already know what's going on, but Ishikawa is calling his competition timeout. And uh, Takashi, since the, the fault was on um, Ishikawa. Ishikawa, so Takashi gets 10 minutes. So yeah, right now we're looking at, it's 13.56 right now, local. How's it looking for y'all around the world right now? So it looks like the clock just got started. The final battle for Formula Drift US is gonna happen next week. So yeah, if you're in the Irwindale area, just go check them out, or not just go. You should go out there, check them out, see some aggressive driving. This is a, a well-known track, a staple to Formula Drift US. Go check it out, go say what's up to Robbie. He'll be out there hanging out. Hopefully they put him to work while he's out there. But we'll see. Thank you for viewing from Hong Kong. We got Atlanta out there. Chicago, you look at that. He's got his 10 minutes started. It's a little, uh, almost at about nine minutes. We got Kentucky, Florida, Kansas, Ireland, Tennessee. Hopefully we'll get, they'll get these two cars squared away. New Zealand. We see y'all out there checking out the chat, viewing in. Thank you guys. Thank you, Drift fans. Ohio, Jamaica, Florida, Germany. So yeah, we got nothing but time to kill right now. We're just waiting for both the 10 and five minute competitions timeout expire so we can see this second part of this battle. Got Texas, Ireland again. We got Argentina, SoCal, and then we have Kenny. Robbie's talking to the tech guys right now. They're the uh, guys on the ground giving us the real time what's going on down there and asking the questions that need to be asked. Ishikawa looks like he's ready to go, going to the burnout box to get his tires warmed up. Got Portugal. Argentina, Honduras, Phoenix, Florida. Thank you all. I can't say it enough. It's awesome uh, actually being a C what's going on and what you guys are saying and actually being able to kind of, you know, one side, I guess, talk to y'all. Y'all are kind of telling me what's going on and I get to read off and, and answer the questions that you have whenever I have the time to. Like right now, we have a lot of time going on. You can see the um, Ishikawa is already ready to go, but now we're waiting for, waiting for Takahashi's team. He had the 10 minute competition timeout due to the contact that Ishikawa uh, had with him through Outer Zone 1. Got Mexico out there, Oklahoma, Indonesia, Alabama. Um, not the greatest weather that we want out here. We don't purposely plan these around uh, the raining season or whatever the case may be. But unfortunately, we have to do with what nature, na Mother Nature has for us and make it happen. So we've seen some interesting battles. If you didn't see the last one that we just saw between Matsuyama and Masuyama, man. Go Matsuyama back. took his whole rear end out on that outer zone three wall. Very exciting, um, but at the same time, we don't want to, you know, it's the unfortunate cause of yeah. what drifting is. Costa Rica, we got Oregon. Yeah, so there you see, you see the pits, 
Kakashi's pits, but I'm not sure if that was a hard enough hit to make an effect on much, but they just want to double check the car. Heck yeah, go check out Irwindale, go say what's up to Robbie. He's already gained one free cheeseburger, so we'll see what else he'll get. <laughs> Hey, I must say, I'll give you guys this. You guys missed it. Literally right before we went live, he was like literally chowing down fistfuls of candy corn. Is there candy corn lovers out there? It is the Halloween season. So where's my candy corn lovers? Because Robbie is like A1 fan right here. I think I eat it once a year. Well, yeah, I hope so. I don't know where you have a stockpile at. <laughs> I think maybe you, yeah, I mean, you can probably order them online, but uh, regular grocery stores, I don't think carry them throughout the year. But yeah, if you don't know what the candy corn is, it's it's something something special. But no, that's the interesting thing. So out here with the uh, Formula Drift Japan staff, I usually like provide some American style snacks. And it's funny the difference between the Japanese and the US. Uh, I wouldn't say definition of snacks, but what it is to them. Because here it's like fish and other stuff like that. But looks like he's wrapping up here. I love the 50 fit love hate on this candy corn topic. There you go, holding it down in Michigan with the candy corn. Robbie would be your best friend for sure. A lot of Japanese say that the US snacks are very sweet, but looks like right there Takahashi is ready to go. He's probably gonna pull out, go to the burnout box, get his tires warmed up, and we're gonna go ahead and get this uh, show on the road. Doing a quick test for his brakes, make sure everything's good, and we'll see. I don't know where the contact was, but um, yeah, I don't know what that was right now. Just the quick breather. Hey, you know, you get free 10 minutes. I guess you got to take it. Yeah. I got this whole chat on this candy corn chat right now, so <laughs> definitely off topic. I'm very good at taking things off topic. Ask Robbie because I'm really... Uh, scatterbrained with when it comes to conversation. But there you go, the fans out here. Thank you all for coming out, trying to stay dry, fighting and defeating Mother Nature right there. You got some J2 drivers out there checking it out, sticking around, seeing how, you know, the pro league is doing and how they're handling the rain that they had to deal with during qualify. There you go, yeah, they're waving. That's a lot of people. Look at that, fighting through the rain, sticking it out. Thank you all out here at this beautiful track, Okayama International Circuit, here in the Okayama Prefecture. You can see right there, beautiful track, 2.3 mile track, 3.7 kilometers. And here they are, the second part of this tandem battle is gonna happen. This is a one more time battle between these two. All right, so slowly coming back to the start line. The chase car, Ishikawa, now leading, and the lead car, Takahashi, now going to give chase. They're getting the okay to start. So Ishikawa, let's see how he's going to do and how he's going to approach outer zone one. But at the same time, is Takahashi going to have that same aggression that Ishikawa gave him on his lead? Here they are coming through the chicane now, approaching the 3-2-1. Here they are, look at Ishikawa coming in real hot to that 3-2-1 right there, initiating, coming around to outer zone oh. one. Oh, just front end washing out, unable to hold it. And there you go, Takahashi adjusting himself real shallow to what Ishikawa was doing real deep in outer zone one. And here they are bringing it back around to this outer zone three, right up against the wall. Yeah, that's not looking good at all for Ishikawa. Yeah, um, 
Ishikawa came in a little too hot. Maybe it's a little bit more, you know, maybe it's a little bit more wetter uh, than how it was maybe 10 minutes ago. Because, you know, no action on the track and just, you know, the misty rain coming down. And uh, maybe it's a little bit more slick than what Ishikawa uh, had thought after driving the first uh, run between these cars. Yeah, that's very unfortunate for him. He definitely came in real hot through that outer zone one and unable to catch it back. And Eggert's going to go with Takahashi. Nishida's going to go with Takahashi. And there you go right there. Kazumi Takahashi is going to finish off the left side of the bracket, and he'll be going against Kanta in the great eight. Man, that was a one more time battle. Great job by Ishikawa. Uh, very exciting to see this driver all the time, but he is knocked out by Takahashi. Uh, Takahashi make it into the grade eight, and he will be battling Kanta for the second battle of the grade eight. And right here, this is a this is our final battle here for the top 16. Who is gonna fill the last spot for the grade eight? Is it gonna be Daigo Saito, or is it gonna be Kazuya Matsuyama? Matsukawa. Matsuyama's already knocked out. See, I told you to get me all jumbled up. Here we go. Matsukawa is going to be in the chase while you have Saito in the lead. Let's see if Saito can carry on while his partner Matsuyama just got knocked out. Here they are coming around. Oh, looks like Matsukawa right there is shooting it a little deep there to outer zone one. Not able to mimic the same line as Daigo there. Coming around through the touch and go to outer zone two. Nice job through outer zone two for Daigo. And right there, Whoa. Daigo right in that wall. Oh. Oh. Sparks. Matsukawa rubbing on that outer zone three wall. Coming wow. back around. That was the, the fireworks there by Matsukawa. And Daigo Saito doing his thing. Really fast right there in Matsukawa. Almost going three tires off, but he held on to it, stayed in it. Daigo Saito also has two tires off at the outside zone one area, but not more than that. Then right there, Saito makes it through, but boom, you saw the sparks there. Matsukawa hits the wall, uh, probably his bumper brace making it spark. So there's party party in the back for Matsukawa's car. Yeah, Matsukawa coming Minimal in real hard. Though. Yeah, coming in real hard right there against the wall. Trying to make it by and squeeze by because his partner in crime, Junya Ishikawa, just got knocked out by Takahashi. Yeah, and this is almost like their home course, hometown uh, area. Um, so I'm pretty sure that they want to make it as far up the ladder as possible. Here they are coming back to the line. Daigo Saito is going to be in a chase position while you have Kazuya Matsukawa in the lead. All right, both lined up, ready to go. You got Matsukawa in that old school A85 with the Hiroshima Toyota with Team Droopy, while you have Daigo Saito in his beautifully built GR86 with the TMAR. Hey, so I mean, it's an A85, but you know, te it's an A86. It's an A86 yeah. Yeah. Somebody was asking what's the difference between the two. A85 is like the SR5 in the US. Um, and the A86 is the GTS model. So it comes with the 4AG. Uh, in Japan, it comes with the 3A, 3A uh, engine, which is a 1.5, and in the States, I, could, I think it comes with the 3A, 4AC or something like that. If you didn't know, Robbie's a huge, uh, he's, got a soft, he's got a soft car for it. That's kind of where he really started and got huge into drifting into it. But here you are, coming in to this outer zone one here, approaching it through the 3 2 one. Nice job there by Matsukawa coming around to outer zone one real early. Dipping at two tires right there, but able to hang on. Daigo trying to close that proximity to him here. Coming up, approaching that three touch and go into outer zone two. 
And here they are coming into this outer zone three. Daigo trying to adjust his car. Nice job right there. Mo maneuvering his car closer and closer wow. to Matsukawa. Very clean chase, though, I would have to say. Both of the runs were very nice. Matsukawa, great lead run. Uh, Daigo Saito, great uh, chase. Um, that was a pretty close, pretty good proximity between these cars, even though it's, you know, the, the, the track is slick. But uh, the chase car, Daigo Saito, adjusting his car and mimicking the lead car right here. So it looks like the new 86 is beating down on the great, wait, great, 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 great grandpa. No, it's like great, 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 great. Because there's an A86 and a 92, then, oh yeah, then 101, 101. then a 111. Yeah, I had a 101. There you go. Egger going with Saito, Nishida going with Saito. So Daigo Saito is going to fill that last spot for the great eight. Wow, that was a long, long uh, top 16, but we are finally done down to these drivers making it into the grade eight. Congratulations to Daigo Saito uh, making it into the top eight. And now he's gonna go against Masuyama. Is he gonna uh, take out Masuyama? Revenge for his teammate because Masuyama took out Matsuyama. And uh, Matsukawa, great job. Uh, that uh, last run that he made was a uh, uh, very nice Clean, looks like, smooth run. And it looks like we're jumping straight into it right there. The grade eight, two, first two competitors ready to fight it out through this battle. It's going to be Hiroya Minoa, the number one qualifier, only 13 years old, going against last last events champ right here with Formula Legif US. Call, coming from the uh, West Coast, you got Ken Gushi going against him. Wow, so Ken Gushi started uh, professionally uh, drifting or when he was around 16 or so. And um, now he's like uh, 30 somewhat years old. Now Minoa, 13 years old, qualifying first yesterday, driving the Team Cusco GR Yaris. This is the all Toyota family battle, I guess, because Lexus is left to the Toyota family as well. And now here we go. Ken Gushi's gonna give chase to Hiroya Minoa. Looks like Hiroya is having a little bit of trouble, oh, was having a little bit bobbling right there through outer zone one, or approaching outer zone one. And there he is right there, carrying it through, able to get right there on the rumble ship through outer zone one. Gushi trying to keep that close proximity to him right there. Oh, Hiroya right there diving in, and Gushi chasing right back after him, coming around right there, pushing him along through that outer zone three. Uh. Hey, you know what? <laughs> Ken Gushi, he didn't straighten. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was uh, crazy. And um, Minoa, this is probably, I would have to say, out of all of the runs I've seen, this is probably not the better ones because he had to throw in a lot on the in clip, made it to the out. But after that, it doesn't look like he is going to be on the line where he is supposed to doesn't get close enough to outside zone two, leaves that area a little too early, doesn't go as deep as he should be on outside zone three. And right here, Kangushi not giving him any, any, any room distance, to breathe, yeah. yeah to, to do anything. And that was pretty impressive because when you're under that uh, condition where Kangushi was in, the car usually straightens and corrects, but he was fighting it, I'm pretty sure, uh, keeping the car sideways. Now Minoa, right there. Oh, it kinda, I, I don't know if it gripped up a little bit or what, because, you know, this, it's not fully flooded wet. It's slick, I would say, so. Yeah, that transition or that change from outer zone two to outer zone three, you saw the huge um, correction that Minoa made there. So we'll see here this time around, we're gonna have Ken Gushi's gonna be in the lead while you have Hiroya Minoa in the chase. Yeah, so like I was saying earlier, Ken Gushi, uh, I think Jared called him the future, or I think that was his nickname back then. Um, and uh, you know, now we have another driver that's younger than uh, where Ken Gushi started, competing in the same series. There they are. Gushi going through the chicane, coming up, approaching that 3-2-1.
And let's see how Hiroi is going to adjust himself to Gushi's driving coming around out of the 3 2 1, approaching the outer zone one right there. And look at that wow. right there. Gushi doing a phenomenal job through wow. outer zone one. Ripping back around through the touch and go. Nice job by Gushi. And like we said, a good lead run is going to have a good chase. Oh, is he going to be able to hold on? Oh, Minoa unable to hold on right there through that touching or the outer zone three. And man. That first half of the track, it was looking very oh, good man. on that battle. You don't have to say, Minoa did super great all weekend, but the veteran, uh, Ken Gushi, with more experience, takes out this young driver at the grade eight. But yeah, we've seen it all. The dry conditions, he did a phenomenal job getting a 91 and a 90 on his qualifier runs. And then here he is battling it out in this wet, nasty conditions which he's already defeated um the other previous competitors so we'll see how it's gonna his fate's gonna be through these judges and you know what i think gushi is very comfortable too because he's coming off of a win um at the utah round of fd uh usa so he looks like he's uh, very comfortable and man minoa this is the first time he made it this far in the uh in a round and I would have to say, great job because qualifying first out of all these adults and making it to the grade eight, that's something to talk about. That's something to brag about. And there you go, the final call. Ken Gushi is gonna get the win and he's gonna move on to the final four. But hands down to the 13 year old. However many 13 year olds are there uh, that could do this. So we'll see here, next battle coming up right now is gonna be between Kanta in the lead position while you have Kazumi Takahashi. So here we are, ready to go, ready to get this battle started. All right, so we got Kanta and Takahashi. Who is going to be going against the OG FDUSA driver, Ken Gushi, in the semifinals? It's going to be very interesting here. Kanta very aggressive. Let's see how aggressive Takahashi is going to be here in the chase. Looks like they're both coming in real hot through that 3-2-1, trying to carry it around. Kanta making a little bit of an adjustment right there, getting right back on it through that outer zone one, and Takahashi trying to mimic him there through outer zone one. Here they are coming through this touch and go. Oh, Takahashi diving in right there, deep into outer zone two. Left a little early, throwing him off the wrong line. Very Takahashi. shallow in that outer zone three. Takahashi fighting to keep the car sideways taking the wrong line from the touch and go all the way to the outside zone three. Ooh, give it a nice little ball. kiss right there. Oh, yeah, something went wrong for Takahashi uh, after the outside zone one. It looked, every everything looked okay, but he did the transition a little too early. Uh, did not go to where he's supposed to for where the touch and go is. He does a flick before that, and he even does a transition before uh, the lead driver, Kanta, ends up being on a smaller line uh, behind, and right here just keeps fighting to keep the car sideways. Does not, it looks kind of messy, and at the end right here, kind of slides right into the left rear of Kanta's car and gives him a little love tap. Now we're going to see how they're going to perform with Kanta in the chase while Takahashi is going to be in the lead. Here you go right here. Look how... That's pretty close. Yes, yeah, not bad at all. But man, Takahashi made a huge mistake there. And you know, like Robbie said early on in the season, you know, when you throw yourself on the wrong line after that, it kind of is a domino effect. So there you go. There's this. She said eight, throwing gang signs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about all that. Yeah, there you go. So these are the supporters for uh, the Team Orange, uh, the Lean Long Tire uh, team. 
So here they are lined up, ready to go. Checking the cars out, make sure no damage was created when they came through the finish. Takahashi made a little bit of contact to Kanta's left rear. All right, the light is all off. There you go. Now Takahashi leading and Kanta giving chase. Here they are, nice job. Looks like Kanta's being real aggressive from the start. Getting a little bit of his proximity apart wow. from him right there, but he's trying to close it. Looks like they both left outer zone one a little early, coming through the touch and go. Yeah, Kanta's got to collect himself and close this proximity gap that he has between Takahashi. And it looks like Kanta played it a little safe in that chase position. Yeah, there was a better proximity made by Takahashi, but definitely not the definitely not the cleanest uh, chase. I'd have to say both of the vehicles did a great job as a lead, but looking at the chase, I guess uh, Kanta's playing it safe, but uh, major mistakes made by Takahashi as well. So. Checking out the replays right now to make sure that we know what the drivers are doing. Here's the drone footage right there. There you go, the touch and go. And Takahashi does okay at the outside zone three. and through the finish line. I'd have to say, if Kanta was any further away, it wouldn't have been good, but. But it looks like it's gonna turn out right for him. Kanta is gonna get the win, and he's gonna be moving on to the final four. Final four, so he's going to be going against Ken Gushi at the semifinals. Looks like the Ling Long Girls are very happy for him, but let's see this next battle. We are on the right side of the bracket now. Koichi Yamashita is going to be going against Mao Yamanaka. That's going to be a fun battle. Both of the... Both uh, champs last year. Yeah, both champs last year. FD Japan champion from last year and FD J2 champion from last year. So let's see if he's going to be able to take out the champ. We'll see here. Last year was our first season ever running FD J2. Let's see how he is going to hold up here against last year's, the defending champ last year. And here they go, Yamashita coming into the 3-2-1. Yamanaka right there dialing it in. See how he's gonna adjust himself here because I'm waiting for him right now to increase that aggression and close that proximity, taking a real shallow line through outer zone one. Here they are coming around through outer zone two. And here's where the attack is, oh, taking out that left rear, oh. Yamanaka not able to hold on through outer zone three. But at the same time, Yamasa just, man, kissing the wall, but not phased. All right, here they are coming around outer zone one. You could see how Yamasha was right there, dipping a tire, look like. Coming back around. And right here, this is the area where, yeah, I'd have to say he did go into the wall, but, uh oh, rain is coming down hard. We'll have to see here. Let's check out another view right here. Here they are coming through that touch and go outer zone two right there. Man. Uh, I don't know. Not sure if that correction from Yamasha right there caused, you know, Mao to kind of anticipate something more. Yeah, but I think 
Yamanaka was on more of a smaller he was line, he was and there wasn't uh, I guess I mean it comes fast uh, don't get me wrong I know it comes fast when you're out there but I don't know if that he was pretty there was a little bit of a gap in between the cars so there was an action and a reaction uh, but I'm not sure at this point right now if I'm going to put that uh, mistake that uh, Yamanaka made on the lead car. Yeah, we'll see here. Looks like the car squared away, taped up, ready to go. Yes, the rain is now definitely coming down hard. Which, I mean, this is what Robbie asked for. He said, hey, if it's gonna rain, make it rain. So here we are. Looks like the lights are going down and they're ready to start this second half of the battle. Yamanaka's in the lead. Yamashita is in the chase this time. Here they are coming, approaching the 3-2-1. Yamanaka early on in initiation, coming around to outer zone one here. Carrying it out right there, riding the line right there of outer zone one. Looks like he was a little shallow there, coming back around through that touch and go. Yeah, doing great on the outside zone one, and now yeah. this is the area. Oh! oh! Same thing, same spot. Yamanaka kissed the wall right there. And this time Yamasa did his glitch. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, you saw right there. Yeah, I was thinking and thinking and thinking as I was driving. I'm not driving. As I was watching this and uh, thought that, you know, it was like, oh, man, like, uh, did the lead car affect the chase car uh, right there when it happened? But this was the exact opposite and worse. But Yamashita just kept going. He did take a shallower line, too, but... Yeah, and look at that huge correction right there by um, Yamanaka. You know what? I've been seeing this now. We got the young drivers coming, but maybe the older drivers has that experience because yep. of the track condition. And there you go right there. Koichi Yamasha is going to be moving on to the finals here. The final four. And you're right. It looks like a lot of experience is playing its part here today. Wow, so congratulations to Yamashita, and man, better luck for the young driver, FDJ2 champ, uh, Yamanaka, and uh, looking forward to seeing him in Fuji. Next, ready to go at the line, we have Wataru Masuyama. He's gonna be going against Daigo Saito. Daigo Saito is gonna definitely give him a run for his money. Daigo's gonna be in the lead while you have Masuyama in the chase. Drivers experience FD USA. Look at that right there. Early on, Daigo coming in with some heat. Masayama trying to keep up with him, but man, definitely was uh, worried about pushing himself. And look at that, planting himself nicely in outer zone one, swinging back around. And here they are streaming right in front of us to outer zone three. Oh, just grinding oh, his wing right Masayama. there. Look at Masayama giving a kiss right there to him on his right side, swinging back around to that inside clip to the finish, and man. Wow. <laughs> Saito was hesitant at the outside zone three, and that's where Masayama caught him. He's like, hey, you're slowing down right here. I'll get right to your door. And he did it. So Daigo coming in. A good line on the outside, but it looks like he came in a little too hot, so he had to wait for the car to settle. Everything else after that looked like it was doing great, but Saito approaching this wall gets hesitant because he was getting super close, and this is where Masayama catches him, gave him a little bump, and right there at the transition, Masayama not giving him any room to run away, and both cars finish line. Look at this, check this out, how much Masayama catches up to Saito, where Saito goes into the outside zone a little wider, but Masayama gets right back onto the same line as Saito, misses the touch and go a little, but right here is attack time for Masayama. Look at this, 
A lot of Ooh. angle. Daigo gets 10 points for knocking that pin down. <laughs> 10 bonus points. On the points. wall, yeah, there you go. But man, an exciting driving by these two drivers. And uh, I would have to say, you know, I was a little worried because this track condition is not cool. But these drivers are making it a lot more exciting than they uh, really are. I thought it was I don't know if be. it's the drivers or if this wall that's making it more exciting. Or it's the combination between the two. And looks like they're making sure everything's squared away. I think all the impact was taken by his wing, taking out that pylon. Wow. So this time around, Masuyama's gonna be in the lead while you have Saito in, in the chase position. And this right here is our last battle in the great eight. Who's gonna fill that last spot for the final four going against Koichi Yamashita? And I know now, since Daigo already did uh, his lead run, he knows what to do because he knows what happened. And here they are coming through. You can see the rain coming down through that 3 2 1. Masayama picking it up this time around because he knows Daigo is going to be right behind him, carrying it out all the way out to outer zone one. Early on, right there, filling that zone. Nice job swinging it back around through this touch and go. And it looks like Daigo's trying to catch up here through Outer Zone 2, not able to get all the way out to Outer Zone 2, taking a different approach here through that Outer Zone 3, taking a shorter line to try to get that proximity back on Masuyama. But man, Masuyama just doing his thing throughout this course in the lead position. All right, so this is a close one because now we see both of the drivers, uh, both of the leads, Great job. The chase, Daigo, Saito is a little shallower on the line, but right here, Masayama misses the outside zone two and outside zone three. And Saito keeping a good proximity, uh, always ready to attack. And we already know how Daigo did through that outer zone three. He was all over it, so. Yeah. We'll see what the judge's final call will be for this battle right here. Will we see Daigo moving on to that last spot in the final four? Masuyama, or are we going to see a one more time between these two drivers? Or is it going to be a one more time? Ooh. So we will see right there the finish. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a bug in my face. And currently, Daigo is sitting in fifth at 209, while you have Masayama at 212, sitting in fourth. So definitely, this is going to play a huge part right here. You got a fourth place overall points going against the fifth place overall points. Only three points difference between these two drivers. Here's that side by side. Cross comparison, so they're comp they're uh, comparing the lead to lead and the chase to chase between the two drivers. They end up towards the end. It looks the same, <laughs> but getting you to ain't got to pay like attention totally to that part. Different. Yeah, exactly. Man, this is going to be a close one. Eggert's going to go with oh. Saito. Robbie Nishida going with the one more time. Yoichi Mamura is going to be with the one more time. So we are going to see a one more time battle, just like you viewers out there in the chat said, one more time. All right, so I did the one more time because Daigo's chase on the outside zone one was uh, not online and his proximity wasn't as close. Now, uh, I didn't like how uh, Masayama gave him space and caught up towards the end. Um, and also, uh, Saito, he did uh, get close at the outside zone three, but it looked like he was, you know, he almost did the, oh, snap, I'm going to hit the wall kind of deal, which gave Masayama the chance to get closer too. But overall, Saito's driving was a tad bit more exciting, and there were a, a few things uh, that I... Formula Drift Japan. <laughs>
The brightness, called brilliant. Valenti. in Japan. Breed. Tenton to Kakshin. Ogura Clutch no technology o gyoshiku. Champion o toru tame no Clutch. Ogura Racing Clutch. ORC. Kyukyuk no shizukasa to anzen sen. On road. Off road. Sekai jiu de katsuyaku suru. ケンダーその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔法性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りでは高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダWhat's up guys, it's Freddy Gospo and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban.
We are back. We had a short commercial break to get these two drivers square back away so we can see another one more time battle between Masuyama and Daigo Saito. Hey, um, just want to remind you that it's really, really cold up here. Um, cold. But I'd have to say um, it's probably really good for the cars for it being cool so the cars aren't going to run too hot. But not for us for cleanup. Hey, mind y'all, Robbie's got a nice, nice, amazing eight and a half hour drive home in that beautiful black tundra down there that you guys are talking about early on in this competition while I'll be cruising in the nice, comfortable passenger seat. <laughs> man, this man, this guy don't even help out, man. Nah. Well, what they told me in agreeance is since he gets paid the big bucks, he gets to drive the big truck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get paid the big bucks. I wish I knew. There they are, ready to go, lined up and ready to make this happen here on their second run together in this one more time battle between Daigo Saito right there on the right in the TMAR GR86 going against Wataru Masuyama in his GR Yaris claiming podium last round. Masuyama, oh, that's crazy because Masuyama took first last round at Okuibuki, but he had to battle it out by Daigo Saito, which he defeated, and Ooh, Daigo got second. That's so it's right. like an all over battle from last uh, event. So driving the Good Ride Motorsports GR Yaris, Masuyama is going to give chase, and this is going to be a GR battle. GR86 driven by a TMA, TMAR GR86 driven by Daigo Saito. Both drivers experienced uh, FDUSA. Here they are. This one more time battle is underway now. Daigo in the lead right here. Let's see how Masuyama is going to adjust himself. But it looks like Daigo once again shooting really hard to outer zone one here. Uh -oh. Coming around, uh -oh. able to carry it through. Oh, he had to wait for his car to settle. Right there early on to outer zone one and Masuyama able to catch up and close that proximity gap. Here they are coming around to outer zone three right here, that danger zone that a lot of these drivers have found with that wall. And look at that right there once again, Masuyama closing that proximity right on the right side of Daigo Saito, swinging back around through this inside clip to the strong finish. Wow, and uh, I got cut off earlier, but I wanted to explain the why uh, Brian Egger went with the Daigo too, but he he liked Daigo's uh, lead run a little bit more, the duration, the proximity, and Masayama was a little way too behind on the beginning. And uh, he agrees that he, he probably could have uh, gone one more time too, but this looks like uh, Masayama is filling the gap from the beginning and trying to stick uh, as close as possible to uh, Saito from the get-go. Here you go, yeah, right Yeah, look here. at that. Once again, closing that proximity gap right there for Masayama swinging back around to that inside clip. Man, phenomenal job. Yeah, it looks like Daigo shoots out a little bit too much. Um, yeah, he had to wait for his car. Zone one. Yeah, so he had to wait for the car to settle and this gave Masayama the chance to catch up fairly quick. Yep. And Saito. Being more conservative right there through that outer zone three, but Hey, that's good enough though. He's pretty close to the wall. He's still in that zone, so there you go. Nah, just reading. Oh, here they are. It looks like they're ready to kick it back off. Masuyama's gonna be in the lead this time while Saito's gonna be in the chase. No, it's crazy how small the like drift community is and, and everything like that. Reading the chat, they mentioned Kill Care. Kill Care is actually a place 10 minutes away from my parents' house in Ohio, and that's where they have a lot of the local events. So crazy how small this community is. Uh, thank you all out there for viewing, checking it out. Let's see how this second part of the battle is and who's going to go into the final four against Koichi Yamashita. Who's going to fill that last spot? Now it is Saito uh, going to get in. Oh. Pylon touch. Candy corn touch. He just, during the break, the commercial break, Robbie had a handful. Yeah, I need some sugar right now. I don't have anything here. It's cold, I don't want anything. You know, I don't want any cold drinks. We don't have any hot drinks right here. I want something in the system. All right, there you are. Got him turned back around. Here they are. Masayama is going to be in the lead. This is the second half of their run right here. Masayama is going to be in the lead while Saito is going to be in the chase. 
Let's see how Daigo's gonna do performing behind Masayama. Definitely he's gonna have to adjust his approach to the outer zone one, because Masayama coming a little bit less hot than Daigo did. Look at that, Daigo right there, keeping that close proximity early on through that three, two, one. Here they are coming early into outer zone one. Masayama just riding that line, came out a little early through outer zone one. Here they are through the transition. Man, Daigo really closing that proximity this time around in that chase right there. Coming back around through that outer zone three, just able to hold on. Man, that was, that was something right there. Both of them kind of missed oh. outer zone two there. It almost was like a copy paste from their last run. Yeah, it was very close, but I have a few things in mind right now where Masayama's lead, even if the lead uh, were, let's say, very, very similar, I think in the chase position when Masayama was behind Saito, uh, he was mimicking uh, Saito a little bit more better in the chase, and that's just my opinion, but I am going to go ahead and check out the replays right here. Masayama, nice distance to the touch and go. Could have been a little deeper at outside zone two, but the outside zone three area looks similar to when Saito was leading. Oh, you can see the little adjustment made by Saito in that second part, leaving outer zone three, but also taking that shallower line in that outer zone three, too. So this one's going to be a tough call for these judges. We'll see if we have a verdict here. Who's going to go against Koichi Yamashita in the final four right here? Mm -hmm. So right now on the left side of the bracket, we have Ken Gushi going against Kanta. And then on the right side, we have Koichi Yamashita, and we're awaiting the final call here against Saito and Masuyama. The suspense, suspense right here. Oh. Edgar going Masuyama. Oh, right there. Wataru Masuyama is going to get the win, take all three judges to the right, and he's going to go against Koichi Yamashita in the final four. Congratulations to Masuyama. Daigo Saito could not make his revenge here. So right now, Masuyama is two for two against battles with Daigo Saito. Yeah, so Saito on the lead, the outside zone one, he had to wait because he did overshoot a little bit. And, out, and also uh, his chase, he was on a very tighter line than Masuyama when he was chasing at outside zone one. And overall, it looked like uh, Masuyama was uh, mimicking Saito a little bit more better in the chase position as well. So it looked like uh, Masayama was able to take this one. Uh, once again, beating Daigo Saito um, and moving on to the final four. Yep, we're just about to kick this final four off right here. And our first battle is gonna be a very interesting one. Yeah, look like looks like we're looking strong here for you online viewers. Thank you all for staying up late. We are currently sitting at around 2.51 p.m. here local time. Brian Eggert all the way coming from the East Coast, staying up real late with us today. Yeah, I just asked. I think it's like midnight-ish, a little after, maybe almost one. No, 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 past. See, it, it's almost one o'clock. Here he is coming up right now. Our final four battle, our first start right here is Ken Gushi going against Kanta. Kanta's in the lead right now, coming up to the three, two, one. Nice job, look at Gushi coming in real hot into Kanta right there, making contact early on to outer zone one. Once again, this is very similar to when Saito went off track because Kanta, Kanta going off track again. We're gonna have to see this replay. Here you go, right here. We're gonna see how much he went off track and how much he was uh, deselling. Wow, real deep, two tires off track right there.
Yeah, yeah. so um, I think this is pretty similar to the Saito and uh, Gushi run that we had earlier. It disrupted um, his, you know, he hit the dirt, car straightened up, disrupted everything. I'm pretty sure that the speed change happens there. Um, so most likely that, that uh, I mean, the contact happened um, similar to what Saito did earlier, and uh, that might be on the um, lead car again. Yeah, um, Conta definitely had a solid two wheels out after that one cone. And you could see how he was really decelling down into coming the to approaching that outer zone one. And yeah, if you, you know, I mean, when you're there and trying not to, uh, trying not to let the chase car go, you're concentrating on, uh, um, on, on going basically for yeah. excelling. And uh, when the car in front of you all of a sudden comes to. Um, not a halt, but, but a drastic yeah, decel. And, and, the, and the angle of the car, you, he loses angle, it comes back, and uh, oh, don't use that. Uh, don't use that. Don't use that on the car. What are you doing? He's giving him a nice, uh, he's giving him a textured paint job, but yes. Looks like Kushi's pulled out. We'll see if he's going to be able to drive back on his own. And you can see his front left fender right there in the picture now. It got popped off. So they're probably going to have to tape that down, whatnot. So we'll see here. It looks like they're doing a front toe for him. Yes, just like y'all are seeing. He is giving it a nice carbon polish. So yeah, it looks like he's getting towed back. Hopefully we'll get good word on the car's gonna be good to go to do the second half of this battle. Robbie's contacting the tech guys, and there's Kanta right there. Making sure all the adjustments look right, make sure nothing got thrown off. And if you're just tuning in, so now we are in the final four here. This was our first battle. Kanta was in the lead. Ken Gushi was in the chase. Um, Gushi came real hot behind Kanta, but Kanta had a dip in the tires right there through that 3 2 1. You'll see right here. And then decelled, holding that e brake all the way through, still holding the e brake, leaving that zone. And then uh, Gushi was trying to carry his momentum out to the outer zone. Because you can see right there, that pylon right there is the start of outer zone one. So they have to really take that momentum and carry it all the way through. But you notice Kanta. Being out right there, two tires out, he was holding that e-brake all the way through, coming back on track and still holding. So he was doing a pretty extreme decel. So depending on what these judges say um, and who's at fault. Oh, no, no, um, we, we already made the decision where the, the, the fault is on the lead car. Okay, so there you are, lead, lead car's at fault. He's on his five minute competition timeout right now. And there you go, Gushi getting his uh, Team Kazama with Power Vehicles, our Lexus RC towed back to the pits. Hopefully they're gonna square it away, make sure everything's good and he's ready to battle it out. Gushi coming out after a huge victory in Utah. New track, his new car. Uh, he's when we talked about him yesterday about this about his victory and everything He's like it was much needed for his team, you know And he says hands down to his uh, team that helped him get him get there and you know Have to deal with the trials and tribulations that they had to deal with with that car And you know the damage that he was sustaining with the car so 
Uh, shout out to his team out there for uh, doing a phenomenal job at Utah. And now he here is, he's out here with the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles team trying to make it uh, one victorious weekend again for himself. Yeah, I mean, uh, he's going to start to love the month. Or was the Utah month? or the Utah, Utah was last month. month. Oh, it was last month. Okay, never mind. So he's going to like September and October if he does He's going to like the fall. Here. There yeah. you go. But, uh, uh, yeah, I talked to uh, Ken Gushi uh, y day yesterday, day before yesterday, about his Utah to congratulate his uh, uh, win. And the first thing that came out of his mouth is, yeah, my team did it. And uh, he said he was able to do it because of his team. So, See, Robbie wasn't on the mic to listen. That's exactly what I said. Thank you for repeating me. <laughs> it sounds better from Robbie, though. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he knows him better than I do, so there you go. But there you go. It looks like he, they're swinging back around to the front of the pits right now. And then Kanta's Team Orange is up there, yeah, they're already, already there, using their squaring away. Minutes, yeah. They're already using their competition timeout right now uh, to get his car squared away. They're and probably checking the car because he did go into the dirt. And then you can see, if you are just tuning in, the right side of the bracket is going to be Koichi Yamashita going against Wata, Wataru Masuyama. Masuyama just defeated Daigo Saito in the final battle for the final uh, for the grade eight to get here in the final four. So yeah, the big thing here when we get from the top 16 moving on, there is a lot of time like this where we kind of have downtime to just kind of talk about what's going on and everything. And I must say, once again, hats off to the Okayama International Circuit staff out here holding it down um, and giving us a beautiful venue to host this event. Also, the lodging that they provide us on the premises because the local town is about an hour away. So it's definitely nice to be right here get up and get right back at it for the event. But yeah, Okayama International Circuit is about eight and a half, eight to eight and a half hours away from the Tokyo area. So definitely a pretty long ride, but it is a local track for some of these people out here. And it's an amazing venue to be at. So there you go, you can see Ken's car getting looked at right now, assessing the situation before the clock starts. Once they touch it, it starts. And there they go. There you go, they're sweeping out all of that sand and gravel out of the bottom portion right there. Look at that huge VR 4.3 liter right there. Under, crammed under the hood of the Lexus RC. Time started, they're at nine minutes, 20 seconds. Blowing all the debris out of the car. And look at that massive, huge turbos right there, twin turbo. I thought you were talking about the turbo that uh, Mr. Kazama's holding. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that's a, that's a blower? A, that's a blower. <laughs> Look at that right there. All that debris that we have to pay back to the Okayama International Circuit track. But yeah, right there, the owner of Kazama Auto, Mr. Kazama himself. So I'm just uh, trying to listen and see what's going on. But uh, earlier I saw uh, Kangushi in the background and uh, I think he didn't know because he doesn't have a spotter and I don't think they even have a radio on him so he doesn't even know what's going on. 
So he came back and he found out he got the 10. And he was kind of surprised. <laughs> so uh, that's like the J thing where you think, oh, yeah, no, my bad, I did it. You know, sorry about that, you know, and then it happens. And I think uh, that's what Taguchi did uh, at one of the rounds at St. Louis when he won, where he was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He didn't even know he won until they called it. Um, that's another J thing where it's like very... Politeness right there, taking <laughs> fault right off the jump. There you go, squaring everything away, trying to get everything back together on I the car. I got towed back, though. Maybe because the amount of debris that was collected inside of the car, they didn't want it to disrupt anything in the car. Okay. I mean, if you check out what's underneath this car right now, there's a huge pile of the um, gravel that was over there. Huge pile of... Okayama. Okayama sitting underneath this uh, vehicle right now. There you go. He's getting a nice uh, refresh right there. Kangushi, the winner of the Utah round of Formula Trip USA veteran. He's getting his uh, J coffees in while he can. So now we're gonna go ahead and check out what's going on in the chat right now. We got some time to kill. While they get this car squared away. That's right, duct tape. The winner. The brooms and the duct tapes are the- True MVPs yeah. this weekend. Zip ties, drift cars, zip ties. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Some broom, broom jokes going on. I think it's pretty funny. So yeah, the Kazama team with Power Vehicles, they are a huge team. They have a huge semi-truck rig that they bring to every event. Definitely making a a mark out here in the Formula Drift Japan Series. Now let's see how Ken Gushi's gonna do in the lead run going against Kanta. At the same time, we're gonna see how Kanta's gonna adjust himself because you can see how he was kind of holding the e-brake throughout that outer zone, or the three, two, one, approaching that outer zone one. So just about five more minutes now. What's up from North Dakota? We see you out there. Well, we don't see you, but I see you on the chat. So yes, thank you all for staying up. I know it's late. East Coast, it's looking at 105 or so. Right now, local here, it's 3.05 p.m. So that means it's 2.05. 2.05 for uh, Edgar oh, yeah. over there. No, it's one. See, he gave me the head nod. You don't, you don't understand the time zones right now. Well, what time is and it? He's two hours behind us, or not two hours, but two hours the opposite. So he's at 1 a.m. Oh. I don't know. I can't do the math right now. No, he said two. See? It's two? Yeah, two. Shh. It's, it's one. Hey, Go he, with one. Hey, he, text, <laughs> he texted me earlier at 151, said it's 151. Oh, there you go. Watching this again. See, like, hold the e-brake right there through. Still holding it. Still holding it. Ken getting right back on it and contact. Yeah, I think that's where the area where Kanta's supposed to start to dive in um, and start basically drifting. There you go, Texas, it's one, that's where it is. That's where I'm messing everything up at. So I'll take the fault on that, I am wrong. But I thank you all out there for Tuning in, looks like Ken Gushi is ready to go. His team got his car squared away. And we'll see how he's going to do in the lead position this time while Kanta is going to be in the chase. Yeah, shout out to uh, the FD USA uh, fam watching the live stream. Thank you for sticking around. And also Kevin Wells. Uh, he is the head tech for Formula Drift USA, and he used to uh, come to the FDJ rounds uh, every round until the COVID hit. 
So hopefully we can see you back here again. Yeah, because I believe in two days is whenever that whole thing drops yeah, where exactly. you Guys, can come back remember, to country. Yeah, so come, come to check. Japan. Come to Japan. Spend money. Hey, come back to <laughs> come out to round six at Fuji. It's yeah, next come, month. So Yeah, if you want to. You know what? Yeah, it's a good idea. If you want to plan a trip to Japan and do this drifting thing and go and see cars, come and do it while we're doing the FDJ series. I mean, Fuji Speedway is a it's 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 closer to Tokyo than Okayama. It's an international track, and there's a lot of history there, too. So you might even enjoy it if you're a car lover. Exactly. And it's going to be a back-to-back -back weekend, so we're going to have FDJ, the Pro Series, go on on the big uh, track, the big international tr circuit. And then you're going to have FDJ2 the weekend after that, and it's going to be a new setup that they're going to do this year that they haven't done last year. Because last year they ended the season at Nico Circuit. And I mean, if you you already know about Japan and their uh, deep history and drifting, there is a lot of tracks located all around this country, small and large. So interested to see how that layout's going to be for the FDJ2 drivers. Yes, and you see both of the vehicles warming their tires up. Finally, going back to the second half of that uh, first semifinals battle by Kanta and Ken Gushi. Love the comments by y'all out there. Just kind of trying to catch up on some of it. Said this live stream's lit, so we're doing our jobs, I guess. Yeah. We're not muted yet, so <laughs> hey. No, there's the only people that are listening are the only people that are commenting. And maybe there's like a hundred. It's okay. I'm okay <laughs> with okay. that. Hey, you know what? If there's one, two, three, a thousand, ten thousand, it doesn't really matter. But you guys glad don't. To be, yeah, glad to be here. Do this. But y'all don't care about our jabbering. Here they are, ready to kick it off the second part of the battle. Ken Gushi all the way, coming all the way from the West Coast. Out here representing, going against Kanto with the Ling Long Tire Team Orange, JZX100 Chaser. All right, so this is the second battle. Now I don't want to see any more contacts or cars going off course. I think the rain turned misty now too. So this might have, uh, while we were waiting for that, it might have changed the surface condition. Here they are coming through the 3 2 1. Ken Gushi getting right back on it here early on in the outer zone one. Look at that right there. Kanta keeping that close proximity. Here we are. This is the final four. Who is going to the finals between these two drivers right here? Coming around, both missing outer zone two. Look at Ken being real deep into that outer zone three, just kissing that wall. Coming back around, and right there, Kanta not giving him any room to breathe or move. Coming into this inside clip, <laughs> and just trying to squeeze past him through that finish. That was the amazing chase done by Kanta, and he was proving his point. Man, I wish that first run did not happen like that. I wanted to see this. This was some amazing driving by Kanta. Ken Gushi does a great job as a lead run all the way on the outside, does miss outside zone two, but makes it all the way out to the outside zone three. And man, look at that. No space to breathe. Kanta all over Ken Gushi. Transition before the lead car. Wow. But I'd have to say, uh, Kangushi does have a good lead run. Um, very smooth and all the way on the outside. Look at this right here, touching the wall. Man. Oh, no, just not missing touching it. The wall. Psych. You want to see me touch the wall? Psych. He's just sparing it right there. Yep. I mean, enough dab damage has been done. Wow. So coming off of a win. Dai goes. <laughs> there you go. Edgar, <laughs> Nishida, and Imamura going right to Ken Gushi. So Ken Gushi is going to be moving on to the finals. And man, the suspense built up by Ken Gushi winning last event at FDUS. And here he is out here in Japan making it happen. Man, is this going to be a back to back round for him? I don't think it's ever happened like that. I don't think so. I, I've never met or seen a driver yet who traveled this far and won at both of the events he's been to. Now, let's see if that's going to happen, but who is going to battle let out with Ken Gushi at the finals? Is it going to be Koichi Yamashita or Wataru Masuyama? 
Here they are coming through the chicane. Yamasha in the lead, Masayama in the chase. Masayama being real close to him early on right here through that 3-2-1. Coming around, approaching this outer zone one. Nice job right there, hovering back around through Whoa. outer zone one. Nice job by Yamashita. And right there behind him, Masayama doing a phenomenal job, trying to close that proximity here, entering into this outer zone three region. Yamashita getting close again, but right there. clears it this time. Masayama, nice job, keeping that close proximity. Transitioning back around to this inside clip. And overall, I must say, Masayama kept a good uh, gap between him and Yamashita. Yeah, and uh, in order to have a good chase run, you do have to have an excellent uh, lead too. And this kind of proves that both the drivers did a great job and did their jobs um, in their position. Yamashita all the way on the outside line at the outside zone one. Touch and go, maybe a little bit of a space at touch and go in the outside zone two, but doesn't get as close as he did earlier uh, at outside zone three where he went into the wall. But uh, throughout this whole time, we got that uh, 2J under that GR Yaris screaming at Yamashita from behind. Uh, being exactly. in uh, within proximity. Exactly, and no pressure to Masayama, but he has to keep in mind, if he doesn't become victorious here, he doesn't get a podium position. Kanta will slide right in into that third spot. Kanta That's got right. fourth in uh, qualifying, while you have Masi Masayama got 14th. And vice versa, if Yama Yamashita, or if Masayama takes the win, is gonna be uh, third, third because he qualifies second, and Kanta's gonna be uh, right outside of the podium. Exactly, so Yamashita right now is already uh, tasting the podium along, you know, let's see how he's gonna do from here. Man, in a clean run by both drivers, I love this, this is great. Uh, no tricks, nothing, you know, just close tandem, good outside lines driven by the uh, uh, lead car. A fair battle, and let's see who is going to take the, the right side down. of the bracket, it's going to be Masayama this time in the lead, Yamasha in the chase. Who's going to fill that last slot and go against Ken Gushi in the finals here for round five. And here they are coming around to outer zone one. Beautiful job, proximity Whoa. almost identical. Coming back around, Masayama doing a phenomenal job through outer zone one. Here through the touch and go, and Yamasha, look at that, working that all the way around through outer zone three here. And that proximity throughout that outer zone three leaving, it looks very good right here, but looks like Masayama's carrying it a little bit harder through that finish right there. That's gonna be a tough one for these judges. Oh my God. Mm. All right, so let's go ahead and see this. Very similar. Both runs were great. And uh, both runs also had their fair share of small mistakes like right here. I thought Masayama was going to go a little bit wider on the outside zone too, but kind of similar line as uh, Yamashita. And also at the outside zone three, not as deep as he usually goes, but Yamashita a cleaner uh, chase, I would have to say, with a lot of angle uh, by both drivers, a lot of throttle by both drivers too. So let's go ahead and check out the drone footage right here. Yamashita also taking the car all the way to the outside. And right here, similar from the touch and go to the outer zone too, very similar to Yamashita's line as the lead car, uh, Masayama does. And right here in this area, similar proximity kept by both drivers. We'll see what the call's gonna be by these judges. It's a tough one for them this round. That's how it usually goes, dwindling down to see who's gonna be the round five champ. It always happens like this, coming down to the final battle. Is it gonna be Koichi Yamashita or is it gonna be Wataru Masuyama? Here's a side-by-side -side view for the viewers and the judges. And, uh, you can see right there, almost identical in proximity. Coming around the touch and go. Man, I mean, the lead is pretty much the same. It's just, you know, a little 
maybe, you know, maybe a couple inches difference. But the proximity by both of the drivers, too. I mean, this just look, it looks like a mirror image. It's going to be, yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's going to be interesting if uh, Masayama makes it because it's like an FDUS battle. Look at that. One more time by first judge, second judge, and third judge. All one more time. So this is, once again, another one more time battle out here. Hey, and it's a real good one more time because both of the drivers did great. They are. And you know what's, what's crazy is usually it's frustrating watching this in the rain, but these drivers are really keeping it interesting for us and for the viewers out there. Um, the biggest thing that we're hoping for now is to uh, get these battles uh, quickly underway. You can see how the overcast skies are getting a little darker for us out here. And I think it's still raining, but it's very, very light. So it's keeping the track not slick, but slippery, I guess. It is. So the vehicles are back in the pits, probably ready to change their tires. And there you see on the screen, Masayama's vehicle and Yamashita's vehicle both got to the pits at the same time, backed it up into their pits. There's the spectators out here fighting the weather. And you know, I mean, since everybody out there is, uh, you know, you don't have to get wet when it, if it rains. I'm glad it's not raining right now, but as uh, a judge and for, you know, speaking on behalf of the drivers and the teams, I'm pretty sure they want it to rain because they don't want it to uh, dry up and become patchy. And that's going to, I mean, that's going to really, it's not really going to, that's going to be really bad uh, if it becomes patchy, especially for the finals. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's going to make it become a pretty nasty battle. But right now, the way we've seen the experience level, not experience level, but the level of competitiveness between these drivers, I think it's still going to be very interesting. There you go, the FDJ2 champ, Yamanaka. And I'm pretty sure they're going back and forth with Spotter and everything and coming up with a game plan how to tackle Yamashita. Or is Masayama ordering a pizza right now? I think he's pre-gaming and uh, ordering a pizza to get ready. Okay. Or something warm. And there you go, Yamanaka uh, jumping in, probably giving him some advice as a fellow driver, as a teammate, the Good Ride uh, Motorsport team. Giving the vehicle some fuel. There's more spectators right there. That's right on that start area. Everybody's under the roof. And then right behind them, that's where all the vendor booths are. And we have the FMX racing going on also. Which hat, hats off to them. They were doing it in the rain earlier, so doing backflips and all that stuff. But yeah, go check out the vendors if you're in the area. Go get some Formula Drift Japan merch if you want but yeah i'm excited to see this battle go underway so we can see who's gonna go against ken gushi and it looks like it looks like yamasha is ready to go go into the burnout box and make sure everything's good to go there you go, rocking the Formula Drift Japan flag right there. The young generation right there, the future of drifting right there, witnessing it. So it looks like uh, Masayama's vehicle is going to the burnout box already. Yamashita's car is already there. So there you go. now let's go ahead and see who is going to join uh, Kengushi at the finals. Is it going to be Yamashita or is it going to be Masayama?
as they are getting their tires warmed up. See what's going on here. Definitely got a lot of broom fans out here. <laughs> Robbie, I might have to stick one in your uh, luggage. <laughs> you can make us, you could be out there and you, you know, work that magic on the track. Man, the guys at Irwindale are probably like, move out of the way. I they, got my blower. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, this is going to be very interesting. Like I said, if Masayama moves on, he'll be going against Ken Gushi, both competitors in FDUS, both coming off of wins from last round. Yeah, so, because uh, Masayama won at, at round four at Okuibuki. And Kenshiro Gushi wins at the Utah round of Formula Drift USA. So we'll see here. Here we are. We're about to kick off our one more time battle to find out who is going to complete the right side of the bracket and go against Ken Gushi in the finals. All right, guaranteed a podium, Yamashita versus the hungry Masayama. There it is, Yamashita coming in. Look at that right there, Masayama closing in real early right there. Right there to Yamashita. Oh! Giving him a little bit of a love tap to Outer Zone 1, but able to hang on there, coming around through Outer Zone 1. Nice job coming, approaching this touch and go. And here they are in Outer Zone 2. Masayama's got to close that proximity back with him here through Outer Zone 3. Wow. And this is where he dialed it in, coming from Outer Zone 3 to Inside Clip 1. Wow, I have to say, Yamashita's lead, getting the bump, but... Look at this. He's like, I'm going to stay in it. So you can't push me out of the way. That right there is tandem battling right yeah, there. And that's called, that's called true. Door to tire rubber. Yeah, I mean, right there. <laughs> he just wanted to leave his mark on uh, Yamashita's car real quick. But now we see this here, but we're going to see the other way around where Yamashita is going to be in the chase while Masayama's got to be in that lead position. Wow. All I have to say, I, I, all I, I, I need new words. I, I mean, just say the well, same thing. There, there you go. That's close enough. Uh, oh, the the, lead, look at the but, mimic, though. Same yep. line. And just making it happen right there with the conditions on the track. And here you go, Masayama coming back around. Masayama pulling up to the lead spot right now, but looks like uh, Yamasha is pulling up to the pits right now. What a good. Robbie's going to get the details on what's going on with Yamashita's car. And there you go. You can see Kusaba Kaneda right there on the right side of the screen. Okada right there also out here checking out the finals here at round five of the 2022 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan Series here at Okayama International Circuit. For those of you that are kind of popping back in, we're waiting for this last battle. Um, Masayama made contact to Yamashita in outer zone one. So Yamashita went back to the pits trying to figure out what they're going to do to take uh, the con from the contact from uh, Masayama trying to check out his car, make sure everything's good. And that's going to be the one more time battle that we're seeing to see who's going to be in the finals going against Ken Gushi. And there's the replay, the slow footage right there of the contact. Masayama right there in the chase. He took Okuibuki last round. He's currently sitting in fourth in points at 212. So right now he is currently the only one sitting in the top ranks in the top five right now out of the drivers that are left over. Kanta got knocked out by Ken Gushi. And right now, if 
Yamashita makes it in, then looks like Kanta's gonna podium at third. But if Masuyama makes it through, then Yamash is going to be third and he's going to bump Kanta. And Kanta currently is sitting third in overall points at 244. Right now, our points lead is Mats Matsuyama, uh, Hokuto Matsuyama with the TMAR team sitting at 279. So you can see the gap 279 for him and Matsuyama is sitting at 212. So we'll see. Going back to what's going on out there with Yo. See a lot of broom going on, but looks like they are both ready to go. Masuyama's gonna be in the lead this time. Yamashita in the chase. We'll see how Yamashita's gonna come back. And Masuyama's definitely gotta be very aggressive through this outer zone one, because Yamashita is very hungry right now and wants a podium. He's been waiting for a podium for quite some time, and here he is coming around to outer zone one here. Nice job. Yamashita closing that proximity right there through outer zone one. Masayama doing his thing, coming here through the touch and go. Ripping back around to outer zone two here. Here they are coming in real hot to this outer zone three, real deep into the outer zone three, but Yamashita not phased. And right there behind him, here's the transition back around to this inside clip. And man, that's it's a tough one right there. Beautiful driving by both drivers. Let's check this out, this replay out now. All right, so looking at this, Masayama, Yamashita, both do a great job on their lead runs at the outside zone one. Both do good at the touch and go, but right here, it looks like Masayama slightly deeper in outside zone two and three as the lead car. And looking at the chase car, it doesn't look like Yamashita is any closer than where Masayama was uh, giving chase. Now, looking at the drone footage. Here's the drone footage right here. Masuyama's lead coming around deep into outer zone two. Bringing it back around. Here it is right here. Wow. Coming real sweeping right back around that wall right there in outer zone three. And then, like Robbie said, proximity was pretty much the same throughout after that outer zone three between the two. Yeah, and uh, I think... Um, I am looking at the... Egger going with Masayama, Nishida going with Masayama, Imamura going with it one, one more time. time. So we're going to have Wataru Masuyama that's going to move on to the finals and he is going to go against Ken Gushi. So now we got the all FD USA drivers battle. Um, I think uh, that was a very uh, close call because the one more time, um, it was very, very close. But I think uh, my opinion was uh, Masayama's lead was a little bit better. Um, but at the same time, he did, uh, Masayama did tap uh, Yamashita at the entry at the outside zone, but we didn't think that that affected the car so much. Um, and we didn't really deduct um, or thought that, you know, Yamashita's line was affected too much when he was going to the outside zone one. Um, and that part, we didn't really include into the better lead run. Overall, uh, Masayama, in my opinion, did a better job at the outside zone two, the outside zone three. So uh, now we know who is in the finals. And before we go any further, we'll be right back after these messages. Be right back.
よこはま。The brightness called brilliant, blinding and vivid. Valentine. Made in Japan. Breed. 伝統と革新。オグラクラッチのテクノロジーを凝縮。チャンピオンを取るためのクラッチ。オグラレーシングクラッチ。ORC、究極の静かさと安全性オンロードオフロード世界中で活躍するケンダその信頼を支える静音性安定性と対魔法性世界が認めた技術と信頼を街乗りである高品質と納得の価格タイヤのポテンシャルをあなたにケンダ What's up, guys? It's Freddy Gospel, and I use RSR suspension on all my drift cars. I love RSR. EO RSR Ichiban.
And we made it here to the finals for the round five of the 2022 G-Shock Presents Formula Drift Japan here at the Okayama International Circuit. It's been a long top 16, I must say. The conditions has not been ideal, but these drivers have definitely been picking up, um, picking it all up and making us excited and exciting to see it. And there you go right there, one of the finalists, Wataru Masuyama, ready to go, pulling out of his pits with a good ride, GR Yaris. But yeah, you're here with myself, Kenny Harris, alongside me is Robbie Nishida, plugging up, in the boats. Up. How you guys doing? And thank you for uh, sticking around this long. And also I'd like to introduce these guys to Tom Saiba uh, over here doing the Japanese commentating. Then we got Yoichi Momura over here on the side. <laughs> the, the other judge. The other judge. Um, the usual judge. And here you go. Here's Kenny. And here's What's me. What's going on? And uh, also uh, Brian Eggert on the East Coast. He's probably what, three o'clock in the morning right now? <laughs> uh, there, there you go. There you go. Three, he said three. Thank you for sticking around for so late. And also, you know, thank you for everybody out there watching the live stream. I know the time differences and everything. It just, it's, you know, it's tough to be able to watch this, but you know, watching it live is different from watching a recording because you already know, you know, you'll see You can fast on, forward yeah, something. Exactly. Yeah, you kind of, you get to have that suspense throughout the, the race. Yeah, and there you go. You see two FD Japan and FD USA drivers over there doing uh, burnouts in the burnout box, getting their tires warmed up. To the left is Wataru Masayama driving the Good Ride Motorsports GR Yaris. And on the right side, there you go. On the right bottom, you see the Lexus R at, uh, RC driven by Ken Gushi, the Team Kazama with Power Vehicles, Motis, RC. And I've already said it once before, but Masayama last round, round uh, four here in FDJ, he won at Okuibuki, but at the same time, you have in the Formula Drift US, last round, you have Ken Gushi taking over and winning Utah. All right, so let's see and we'll find out in a minute who is going to come on top. Is it going to be the OG Ken Gushi, Kenshiro Gushi from the West Coast driving in the Formula Drift USA series for many, many years versus a few years in, Otaru Matsuyama from Yamanashi, Japan. Just like someone just said in the comments, Ken Gushi could make history here, winning in both series back to back. First ever winning FDUS and FDJ rounds. And here they are coming through the chicane. All right, let's see this. And they're the same rounds, the round before the final round. Here they are coming up the strip right here to the three, two, one. Ken Gushi initiating real early, but look at that. Masayama right there on his right rear. Closing that proximity more right there through that outer zone one. Nice job filling that zone by Ken Gushi swinging around. Gushi coming into the touch and go. Masuyama right there closing it into this danger zone right here through that outer zone three. Nice Ooh, job by oh. Gushi ripping around, coming out successfully. Catching back around to this inside clip. Man, it looks like uh, Masuyama. Not giving Gucci much room. Let's go ahead and check this out one more time. Filling the outside zone well. He's been doing that really good all day. In the wet. And the touch and go. And doesn't fill the outside zone two as much as he should be. But right here, fills the outside zone three. Boom. Hits the wall. Uh, disrupted the car. But Masayama, not caring what happens, <laughs> just sticking it to his door. Right there, from the beginning to the end, this time, Masayama. Yeah, I must gets say. Gets a hold of Kengushi. From the start, Masayama definitely looked like he was going to take a shorter line, but you can see how he adjusted himself and hit that zone where Ooh. he needed to be. Ooh, and look at that disruption made by Ken Gushi against that outer zone three wall. 
and Masayama not phased at all, just doing <laughs> what he's been doing all he's day like, long. He's like, all right, you can go into a wall. That's cool. I don't have a rear I'm bumper. Here. I'm not going. Yeah, I'm right here. So here you go. Purge. <laughs> Changing it up here. Masayama's going to be in the lead this time while Gushi's going to be in the chase. This is it. Who's going to close out round five for this year's series here at Okayama? Man, so this is really happening because both outside outstanding drivers both competing currently in the Formula Just USA series. Both coming off of a win. Yeah, Masayama sitting in fourth place while Gushi's sitting around 11th place right now in the point standing. So we'll see how this is gonna go here. This could be the last battle you see right here. Last tandem battle of the day and of the weekend right here, wrapping up at Okayama International Circuit. Here they are coming in three, two, one. Masayama entering outer zone one real early here. Coming around, look at that Gucci trying to hold on. Uh oh. Catching back, clipping inside right there, coming through this touch and go. And here it is. Let's see how Gucci's gonna finish this second half, coming into outer zone three here. Masayama, Masayama. doing a front off on a job right there against the wall, ripping back around. But look at that. Gucci trying to get back on him and close that proximity to him. But Masayama just doing what he's been doing all weekend. That was a good run by both drivers. Masayama filling the zones and doing what he's supposed to as the lead driver, but looks like Kangushi had a huge correction at the beginning of the outside zone one. This might have been a little too fast for that heavy car getting into the outside zone. He couldn't fill the outside zone two as well. Outside zone three looked great by both drivers, except Masayama didn't hit the wall and he got really close to it, which didn't disrupt his car. That might be, we might have a winner here uh, after these runs. Exactly, if, you, if we see cars pull up, then we know we have a verdict on today's final. We have a winner, but I, I already gotta say it right now. Yamashita, he, he, he locked in third right there with the way that he did in performing and qualifying. He got second overall in qualifying, so it's gonna bump him straight into the third spot and podium. Wow, and wow, and wow. That's all I can say all day today from all the excellent driving that we saw here. And uh, hopefully you guys were able to see that as well because this is not easy. The track was slick all day and we're going from high speeds to low speeds and into walls and around turns. So uh, it's a roller coaster for a lot of the drivers, but it looks like these two drivers made it this far. And now we're gonna, we have a winner. Oh, we do? Okay, there you go. We're, we have a winner. The results have came in. So they're going to get these cars pulled up. So yeah, thank you for y'all out there for sticking with us. It's been a long top 16, a little over three hours, I believe is how long we've been out here in the top 16. We had a lot of one more time battles. It looks like the chat has stayed pretty lively throughout this time. Thank you all. That's who we're communicating with is y'all out there. We're not on the PA system this time. FDJ2, we're on the PA system and talking to the live individuals out there. But this time, it's literally dedication to straight all y'all fans out there internationally, all around the world, checking us out. So thank you all for sticking with us and uh, making things happen because without y'all, we wouldn't be here. And here they are. Here comes the drivers. Swinging around, coming up to the Dunlop, or actually the start gate here. But yeah, we'll go ahead and announce the winners for round five, and then we'll go straight into interviews. And with the interviews, Robbie's going to go ahead and take notes, and he'll go ahead and do a translation after the interview is done.
Hey, appreciate that. Shout out to y'all, not me. I'm just here filling in and making things uh, happen and giving you guys the feedback and what you guys want to know on what's out here because a lot of y'all can't be out here. But looks like in two days, a lot of y'all be able to travel uh, once again internationally here to Japan. What's yeah, going on, Robbie? Uh, because of the time, we're going to cut. We're not going to do the interviews, so you're not going to be able to see that on the live stream. Okay, there you um, go. Because we're, we have an official um, award ceremony after this. Uh, we're going to have to go into that, and uh, we're cutting short on um, time, so we're just going to have to uh, skip all of that. But we will tell you who the winner is right here in front of the judging stand. There you go, go Yamashita. Repping the Cylon Tires hat. There they are, coming through the start gate, down the strip, making their way in front of the judges' booth. Making their way around, here you go, outer zone one. But yeah, overall, very exciting. For what it was, for what Mother Nature handed us, it was a very exciting event. I'm very happy with it. Robbie stayed hyped up and was in it. He has a line of candy corn in front of us ready to knock it out after he's done here to collect some energy for these announcements. Yes, and uh, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. FD Japan, the level has been, it's been stepped up uh, this past couple years. And I'm glad to see, you know, since we haven't had so many international drivers, but luckily we had Ken Gucci uh, come in from the U.S. and also Masayama traveling back and forth from the U.S. to Japan. And it's really, really tough to do. Um, I've experienced it before and I've done it for a long time. It's really, really tough. And uh, Yamashita uh, right here on the podium with these other two young drivers, um, you know, as an OG. Uh, winning this round last time and winning the whole series uh, two years in a row and uh, coming back like this. And the points ranking is going to be all over the place for the uh, final rounds. It's going to be really interesting going into Fuji. Oh, yeah, for how tight the battle to first is right now. I mean, uh, I guess in Japan they're really, really strict about the masks and stuff yet, but, I mean, I'm... I'm okay with the not mask because we're out in the air. <laughs> we're out in the open, but yeah. So that's just me. That's just me. So we want to see these smiling. You know, you want to see them, the, the the true facial expression to to capture that on camera. But all right, here we go. We're going to be announcing the third place driver. So here we are, third place. We kind of talked about a little bit. He's a champ himself, back-to-back -back champ. He's finally podium right now. He's with the Team Weld in the JZX100 Mark II. Quali or qualified second, number eight, Koichi Yamashita. Back on, back on the podium. Congratulations to Koichi Yamashita. Now, the Formula Drift Japan Round 5 Okayama International Circuit. The winner here goes to... The winner is car number 530, Wataru Masayama driving the Good Ride Motorsports GR Yaris. Two rounds in a row wins both rounds in a row with this new car that he's driven with his team. Exactly. Congratulations. Back to back. Now let's see if he's going to carry it next weekend at exactly. Irwindale. I get to see it live. Exactly. So you guys out there, don't forget, mark your calendars, make sure you make it out here. And second place, congratulations all the way from the USA, Team Kazama with Power Vehicles, Motis Lexus RC, car number 21, Ken Shiro Gushi gets second place podium here at Okayama. There you go, both guys right there. Congratulations to these drivers. We will be doing their interviews uh, at the official uh, award ceremony. So thank you very much. We'll be cutting this really short, uh, but uh, 
Oklahoma Circuit. I'd like to thank them uh, for another great event, and we would be seeing them next year again. And uh, thank you to all the staff, everybody out there watching this. The Formula Drift USA family, every guys, we, everybody over there, we love you and we miss you guys. And as uh, soon as the borders open up, uh, it's going to be a free for all. So we're all going to have a great time. And once again, thank you very, very much for uh, joining us and stay, sticking around this long. Brian Eckert, all the way from the East Coast, uh, our guest judge for uh, the round five here. Thank you, Brian. And I'm pretty sure you're going to knock out and fall asleep right away. Exactly. <laughs> but also stay tuned to next month. We have our final round, round six at Fuji. So check us out. Come out and visit if you can. If you're in the country, come check it out. And then at the same time, if not, we will be live for that. It'll be a back-to-back -back weekend between FDJ and FDJ2. But also, we already talked about it multiple times, Irwindale is next weekend. Make sure you go there, say what's up to Robbie. And yeah. And these drivers, you'll see Masayama and Kinshiro Gucci there. Exactly. So That's go say crazy. what's up to them and uh, tell them how they did today on this insane conditions that we had with Mother Nature and what it handed us this weekend. Hey, and you know what? Thank you, Kenny, for uh, another successful event here. And thank you to you all watching um, the live stream and everybody who came in, came out here and also the entire Formula Drift Japan uh, staff. Yes, and hands down to Robbie. He had a busy weekend doing uh, Japanese and English commentating for FDJ2. And then here he is filling in the, the void, commentating, giving you guys the inside view of what the mind of the judges are thinking for every one of these runs out here. So thank you, Robbie, for doing that. Once again, phenomenal job. And yeah, it's definitely starting to pour a little bit more they're getting a few last minute pictures in and then we're gonna head over where the vendor's booth is, is that's where the stage is gonna be and they're gonna have the award ceremony there along with other items out there. So if you're out there and you're checking this out, go straight there, get some good pictures. And there you go, Masayama first place and definitely gonna boost himself up from the fourth place point standing with 212 that he has currently. So we're, I'm definitely interested to see how that's gonna pan out. Hey, um, I mean, we're here this long. I mean, I guess we should have done it in an interview. Yes. I'll interview you. How is it, Robbie? How Are you excited at the end of all this? I am, and uh, I'm not excited for the eight-hour drive I was that we just going to say that to just kind of throw it at you like as a jab. But, yes, we have an eight-and-a-half-hour yeah. eight drive right, after so, this. So thank you very much, everybody, and have a good night, good morning, good afternoon, and see you guys at the next round. Um, see you guys maybe next week, but see you guys next round at Fuji Speedway next month. Goodbye, and thank you all.